The Egg Bowl trophy has arrived in Oxford. Here in the possession of the Mississippi State Bulldogs and their head coach, Dan Mullen. The Bulldogs, led today by Dak Prescott, their Heisman Trophy candidate quarterback, have won four of the last five. It's senior day at Ole Miss, and fans have been celebrating in the Grove, recognized as the holy grail of tailgating sites by many. Among the 21 Rebel seniors, free safety Cody Pruitt, the leader of this group, and Bo Wallace, the quarterback who will start, though he's hampered by a bad right ankle. It is the 111th meeting between Ole Miss and Mississippi State. to the Home Depot SEC on CBS. This afternoon, we are in Oxford, Mississippi. It's the Egg Bowl, and it features the Mississippi State Bulldogs at 10 and one, and the Ole Miss Rebels at eight and three. Mississippi State still with a chance to get to Atlanta as the SEC West champions. They need some help from Auburn. But in the larger picture, you've got Alabama on top of the current college football playoff rankings, Oregon, Florida State, and then Mississippi State. Hi, once again, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. I'm Vern Lundquist, along with Gary Danielson. It seems to me, Mr. Danielson, Mississippi State needs to not only win, but be very impressive in this one. I think you got it nailed, Vern. Um, listen, things have not exactly broken a Mississippi State's way, but the committee kept them fourth. TCU had a very impressive win. Ohio State struggled a bit, but then came back at the end. It's going to be a lot of style points. Yes, they're going to have to beat a good Ole Miss team, and they're going to have to do it convincingly, but they're fourth, and if they win big, It'll put a lot of pressure on the committee not to drop them. Well, we're going to talk about the quarterbacks in just a bit. Where else do you see this game being decided? You know, Vern, both of these quarterback attacks from both teams will run the quarterback and throw with them, obviously. That means those defensive lines will have to make an impact, and there's some great players on both sides. For Mississippi State, Preston Smith, the senior, has made play after play, leads the SEC in sacks, and Chris Jones, a young young sophomore superstar in the making. But Ole Miss has a pair just like him. Robert Kimdichie at defensive tackle is a budding superstar himself. And then Isaac Gross, we had him last week. He had a great football game against Arkansas when that Ole Miss defensive line shut down Arkansas's running game. They're going to have to have that type of game against Dak and that team for Mississippi State. Well, there's the transition. Dak is Dak Prescott. He's the quarterback for Mississippi State. And Bo Wallace injured coming into this game. Yeah, I think let's start with Dak in this football game. I mean, he's carried this football team all year when he goes well in these big football games running the ball Mississippi State has a great chance a spread attack is led by that guy we early in the season they shocked LSU with his running attempts and you know when Dak Prescott's putting up big yards they have a chance to win he was early only slowed down once all year pretty good football team against Alabama they did not win now Bo Wallace the storyline is will that ankle be good enough because we've seen Bo Wallace who's watched him warm up he's really the whole team for Ole Miss it's not just good Bo bad Bo it's lonely Bo and today it's going to be whether it's going to be a healthy Bo because Bo plays a lot better at home than he does on the road it's the Egg Bowl the SEC on CBS Back with more from Oxford after this. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by New York Life Insurance Company. Verizon. The Home Depot. And by Bud Light. of atmosphere of a difficult big ball game. 
A battle on a Saturday afternoon. And he scores! Woo! Dog put another touchdown on the board. Rebels ready to go here in Oxford. State matters. We don't like each other. We love to beat each other. There's two programs that are awfully tough. So let's see how we can get all everybody's one question. Now we take you to first on the field, presented by Microsoft Surface. And first on the field, the Rebels of Ole Miss. And not far behind them. Dan Mullen. They uh, had a uniform change after warm-ups. Mississippi State, 10 and 1, looking for the first 11 win season in their history. The one loss, by the way, to Alabama in Tuscaloosa. Let's go down to Allie, who is with Dan Mullen. Coach, there's a lot at stake today. It's the biggest game in the state of Mississippi, and there's a college football playoff spot at stake. How do you control and manage the emotions of a game this big? Well, I think we have great leadership with our seniors out here. They know what a big game this is, and not on the national perspective, on an, at a home in-state perspective. It's bigger than anything nationally, so uh, our guys know how big a game this is and have prepared well all week. You've coached in a lot of rivalries. Had great success in this one, winning five of the last six. What sets this rivalry apart? Well, it's neighbor against neighbor a very personal game it's bragging rights in this state everywhere you go for an entire year and that makes it a pretty personal game good luck coach thank you dan's been in a lot of big games remember what we talked about before with him he likes to go wide open last year he had a true freshman quarterback playing for an injured deck started out the game wide open he will be the same well, the skies have cleared. It is windy, however, 65 <laughs> degrees. 111th game between these two bitter rivals. First meeting in 1901. The game was called because of darkness. There was a squabble before the game regarding a perceived ineligible player. Seems to happen, doesn't it? Mississippi State won the toss and they have deferred the option so that means Ole Miss will get the ball to begin the 111th Egg Bowl. Logan Cook will kick off. Now I promise you those numbers look fine on your television set. They're indecipherable from up here in the press <laughs> box. We'll go body type. We, we, we'll figure That's it out. That's right. <laughs> oh goodness. Jalen Walton is the deep man, along with Mark Dotson. Into the bright sunlight, the ball is taken by Walton. Surges out near the 28-yard line. And it's time now for the Chick-fil-A. Starting lineups. One of these days, we're going to get that timing down. Yeah, I watched him in more months very carefully. He's not even close to 100%. Now, maybe this thing's going to loosen up. But as we watched that game yesterday, Brandon Allen for Arkansas got worse and worse as the game went on. We don't, I really don't know. Could, it, could this be the best bow at the beginning, or might he get better? Brandon Allen with a back injury in that the Arkansas loss. Going deep. Incomplete intended for Vince Sanders. What a great play by Jamerson Love, number five that time. Stayed with his player the whole way and then ripped the ball loose right at the end of the play. Bottom of your screen, post route, watch him stay with it and rip it out. And they toss quickly on second down. It's Jalen Walton, Ole Miss looking for a running game. Not been present, especially in SEC play. Well, Jamerson Love had one good play, and I think he's down on the field. Yes, it is him. Yeah. 
one of the uh, Bulldog yeah, seniors. Yeah, he, he crashed that sweep that time, hit it head on. One of the real steady players in this uh, defensive backfield for Mississippi State. Mississippi State has 16 different seniors, fourth and fifth year players, that are starting this football game. Coach Mullen is out on the field. Take a look from overhead. On the right side of your screen, about three quarter, about a quarter of the way in from the right side, you can see he hits his helmet right on Jalen Walton's knee, it looks to me. And while they tend to Jamerson Love, we'll step aside. While we were away, good news, Jamerson Love able to stand up and walk off the field unassisted. He's on the sidelines right now chatting with the uh, team physician. That gives us a chance to talk about the Ole Miss offense. Tunsil has had injuries recently. Vince Sanders, he was the intended receiver on the first play. He's the go-to guy essentially now that Laquan Treadwell is out with an injury. Yeah, the go-to guy last week, though, against Arkansas was blanked. No receptions. Exactly. Third down two. They fake it to Walton, then they fake it the other side to Adeboyjo. And look at Wallace. It's close. Preston Smith with the tackle. Tried to sneak the back out of the backfield. Defended very well by Mississippi State and forced the scramble up the middle. These are the first ranked number one and number two in the SEC in third down defense. Actually, they're tied. They're both one third of the time is that's the only amount that the offense is able to convert. Mm. One out of three. Well, let's see how uh, the spot, how close that is to giving Ole Miss a first down. And, and we're, no. We're an expert on this. Started our season off with Georgia, South Carolina. Yeah. With a shot just like that. Hmm. See if. Allie the Force tells us that Jamerson Love has gone to the locker room for an evaluation. He did suffer. Looks like they got a Wildcat offense in there. Is Jeremy, Jeremy Lickens. Yeah, Jeremy exactly. Lickens. About a 270 pound tight end, fullback, quarterback. And he has carried it 19 times this year. Boom. That's enough. First down. Q Freeze yesterday told us. They're going to look for different ways to run the ball effectively in this game. He knows that he needs help for his injured quarterback. Now, there's one of them right there on short yardage. You know, that wasn't blocked all that well. Ran right through Preston Smith, but pretty big man. And now Wallace on first down 10. This time, they give it to uh, Itavius Mathers. We will see four running backs for the Rebels this afternoon as they search for the most effective of the quartet defensively now. Brown, Jones, Yules, and Smith. Jamerson Love in the locker room now. Uh, a blow to the head. Hughes, Market, and Calhoun. Complete the lineup. Second down, nine. Tom Ritter's our referee. The booth has initiated contact with us. Haven't heard that phrase. It wasn't our booth. No, nope, it wasn't me. <laughs> you know, I, I think it was the, the booth saw that special on you at 1.30. I wanted to tell Tom <laughs> a couple spots they liked. I hope all of you out there watched it because it was pure Vern. You liked it, didn't you, Vern? Replay equipment malfunction. Second down. <laughs> Hate to hear that too. I it was an honor. Gary. <laughs> it was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, well, a shout out to uh, the producer, Pete Radovich, Gareth Hughes, 
Dave Anarillo. They've been working on that for about a year, and it was. Uh, it made you look good, Vernon. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you drew attention to the fact that I didn't grandpa on my shirt. <laughs> I appreciate that. Second down and nine. Mathers is the running back. Wallace. Oh, dear. Benardrick McKinney, number 50. Gary, the rushing troubles uh, have been obvious. Right, and, and you look at it, here's the tailbacks in all of their games, the SEC games, and how much they're running back. There's a leading ball carrier in every game. And look how weak it's been. It, as I say, it's lonely bow out there, and today on a bad ankle. Walton is the running back now. Third down nine. Ben Still will snap it back. Blitz coming. Wallace can't run, but he does throw it complete. Cody Kaur. And it was a courageous throw, too. Remember how last week against Arkansas, we talked about Bo not stepping into his throws. Look at him step into that throw with Preston Smith, laying one on him, and a perfect throw to the outside to beat the best Calhoun. And a first down 10, and the ball across midfield. Here's play action. Wallace incomplete behind Evan Ingram. Wallace slightly behind. Well, not slightly. I wondered about that. Badly behind. <laughs> well, and then uh, Wallace and Ingram exchanging, communicating with each other. There's Ingram. Listed as a tight end, but he will play all over the field. Second down, 10. Deep again. Oh, incomplete. Yeah, Will Redman, he is some football player, yep. I'll tell you. We've been watching him all year. He reminds me of Vernon Hargraves, the way he confidently reacts to the ball in the air. And watch how calmly he just knocks his football down. Remember the All-American, as you look at Bo, those, those hits early in the game will mount up on an injured football player. Redmond listed as the backup to Jamerson Love, but this is the fourth time we've seen Mississippi State, and as Gary said, he is really effective. Wallace has time now, but is a deep and complete over the head of Quincy Adeboyo. And that gives us a chance to go back to Adam Zipper in New York for this Ford update. Hey, Vern, rough couple days for Georgia fans. No SEC championship game trip and no state championship. Hudson Mason intercepted by D.J. White in overtime to seal it after Tech had gotten a touchdown on their first possession, 30-24 to the final. Back to you. All right, Adam, thank you. And the first punt of the game coming up now. Will Gleason, who last week in the rain in Arkansas, punted only one time and then was replaced by <laughs> Gary Wundling. Rugby style. Well, that's pretty. Sure was. And the ball taken inside the 10 yes. by Fred Ross. 41-yard punt, nothing on the return. This is the Egg Bowl. One hundred eleventh playing of the Egg Bowl, first so named in 1927. The trophy said to resemble a golden egg. Last time the rivalry was broadcast was on on network television was NBC in 1964. I don't know this, but I'm guessing. But the play-by-play -play guy was the late, great Kurt Gowdy. Uh -huh. I'm just guessing. Langston Rogers, the retired SID at Ole Miss, will hear that and will come rushing in with the information. First down, 10, Mississippi State. Play action, Prescott. Dance is out of trouble. Boy, he is popped. And the Chick-fil-A starting lineups presented by the cow. Dak Prescott. 
Well, I think that's part of the game plan for this fast-moving defense for Ole Miss. They, when Dak Prescott runs it or throws it, they got to hit him and hit him hard. Josh Robinson gang tackle. I'll tell you what. If Mississippi State's going to win this football game, they're going to beat Ole Miss at their best. You know, this was a legitimate challenger for a national title until Laquan Treadwell fumbled that football and it, the air went out of this program. But they're ready to play today. Third down, eight. That was the loss uh, to Auburn. And they've lost their last three SEC West games. Prescott, right side, Beautiful. got it. Yes. Darunya Wilson, number one, a first down. And Darunya Wilson gets this football because that offensive line allowed this play to develop. Just a big curl route right there. Probably the first pass play you put in on the first day of offense. Dak looks left and come back to right and puts it right on the face mask. Perfect. Gain of 15, first down, 10. Josh Robinson, the running back, held in check in the last couple of games. He's got two games just shy. Here's the option, and Robinson gets the pitch. Cut down at the 28-yard line. Offensively, let's introduce you to Mississippi State. Lozell Malone Day Beckwith. Malcolm Johnson listed as a tight end, but like Evan Ingram for Ole Miss, he'll move all over the field. To Jamie on Lewis, number four, Dan Mullen, sixth season at Mississippi State. Second and seven. Play action again, out into the flat. It's caught by Josh Robinson, defensively now for Ole Miss. Brown, Kemdiche, Gross, those two featured by Gary at the top. Keith Lewis gets the start for Sir Darius Bryant. Cody Pruitt is the leader. Bryant is sitting out the first half of this game suspended by Ole Miss because he took a swing at an Arkansas Razorback last weekend. Third and three. I think Josh Robinson is way down here at the bottom of the screen. Can't even see him. He's so far down. There he is. Option. Prescott. Nothing. Burn again. Both of these defenses are excellent on third down. They do it a little different. Mississippi State is more of a two-gap stay-at-home. Ole Miss moves, and they're fast, and they make up a lot of territory. The defensive ends run like the wind, and both of them, number 27 and number 10, make plays. That time it was C.J. Johnson. Well, we were impressed last week in that rainstorm in uh, Fayetteville. Down all game long, this Ole Miss defense never really yielded. They fought hard. Fair catch on the punt. Taken by Markel Pack, number 11. Well, this defense is called the Land Shark. Nicknamed that by the late Tony Fine. You figured out. We welcome you back to Vaught Hemingway Stadium. Get the fastest scores and updates for Mississippi State, Ole Miss, and all teams with the CBS Sports app, the fastest app for sports fans. Download the CBS Sports app now. Vern, you uh, asked the audience if they knew what that land shark is. You yeah. figure it out? Well, there's a few here that might not know what it is, but they know what the land shark, when you got Everyone involved, that's a good trademark. It could be uh, <laughs> interpreted as a really bad salute. No, that's Land Shark around okay. here. <laughs> First down, 10. Football's king in the South, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Hand off right side, Jalen Walton. Chris Jones, number 96 with the tackle. Ole Miss has to continue to do this. They have to give 
Bo Wallace in this offense, another weapon. It cannot be one-dimensional. Bo keeps it, Bo throws it, Bo options it, Bo play action passes it. They need some help. Second down and four. Same play. Right. Yep. It's Walton again. He's got the first down. Well, that's got the Ole Miss bench charged up. There is a flag. Same play back to back. Coming out oh. in front of him out there. Justin Bell gets a good block. Didn't, and then did he get a good hold? Or I think he did. <laughs> thought he was in the top 78. There. The 78 offense. 10 yard penalty. Oh. Play second down. That wasn't the call. Yep. It was against Lar uh, Laramie Tunsil yep. on the other side. Tunzel's one of those highly recruited true sophomores. Didn't only played briefly in last year's game. He got hurt in the first quarter and was forced out of the football game. Ole Miss really missed him. He's one of the good tackles in our league. Here. And the penalty results in a second down 11. Midway through the opening quarter, scoreless. Wallace. Oh boy, he exposed his receiver, didn't he? Catch was way up in the air, Cordy Core to Lando Cleveland, number 31. I think you're right. And let's hope for Cody Core that that's all it is is his wind knocked out of him. Because Cleveland, what well, could be his elbow that caught in a helmet right there, could you know, have no idea right there. I thought it might have been his, got hit and got the wind knocked out of him, but could be his shoulder, elbow, arm. Yes. There's Cleveland with the helmet. Right to the elbow and arm, right? Yes, indeed. The ball hung, and it's exactly what happened to Bo Wallace last week. Two of them against Arkansas where the ball just hung. Vern, you said it. The ball floated out there, and it was a problem for Bo Wallace in that Arkansas game. And while they take care of Cody Core, will once again step aside. That's presented by Southwest Airlines. Well, while we were away, Cody Core got up and uh, was able to head to this side of the field. Hopefully, again, he just got the wind knocked out of him. Third down three. Out into the flat, caught by Walton. He's got a first down. And more. Well, so far, Bo Wallace has been able to distribute the ball well enough and keep the offense moving. Just a little bit of help from the run game, and Ole Miss comes back from that uh, penalty and gets an important first down, gets it out the midfield. Second time they have been in this neighborhood. Oh, a fake. You bet. Jalen Walton again. See the commitment from Hugh Freeze to find a running game. You know, when we met with him yesterday, I go, Hugh, come on. You're giving him no help running. And he said, well, we're going to try to come up with different ways. Here's a different way. Fake the throw and hand off with the left hand and find some help for your quarterback. Great game plan so far for Ole Miss. At a game of 13, a first down, Hugh Freeze in his third season as the Ole Miss head coach. First down, 10. Play action. Wallace down the middle. Got it. Vince Sanders. Ole Miss on the move. I thought this was going to be a pop pass inside, but it actually was Vince Sanders to the outside. I'm thinking pop pass, pop pass. No, he goes to the outside. We've seen that a few times in this offense. Nice read by Bo. Gain of 18. Play action again. Wallace into the end zone, intercepted. Picked off nine yards deep. The receiver never turned around. And Wallace intercepted again, this time by Tamez Calhoun, his first of the year. And it was on first down in the red zone. By the way, and you're going to see the back to the back back end of it. Number 23 is going to get the interception. The ball was behind the receiver, Vince Saunders, that time, and he really never found it. You know, 
as bad as Bo has been with interceptions on the road, that's his first interception in the SEC at home this year. He's had a key fumble, but that's his first interception. And so the drive stymied, and uh, Mississippi State takes over at the 20-yard line. Prescott. Not sure where that was going. Fred Brown intended receiver. Let's go back to Adam in New York. Well, Vern, Jameis is having some issues, too. Two interceptions in the first five minutes for the Seminoles quarterback. They've led to two Florida field goals. Six-nothing Gators trying to send Will Muschamp out on top. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Adam. Six-nothing down only for Florida State. That's like having a lead for Florida State. <laughs> Crazy team, aren't they? Yeah. Last team to beat them, the Gators. Nothing. Nothing. Ashton Shumpert, number 32. Both of these teams to want to help their quarterback running the football, but what usually happens is the quarterback starts running, and then that opens up things for everybody else. We'll see if Dan Mullen can find some help for Dak Prescott. Another third down. And Ole Miss is licking their chops, wanting to get to pass rush. Four-man rush. Ben move. They got him off the corner. Marquise Haynes, number 27. That's seven and a half sacks for the linebacker. Yeah, he's a hybrid defensive end, though, especially in nickel situation. And he comes off the edge like a bullet. Here and here, these two guys are as fast as there is in the league. And no chance that time from the outside by Clausell, number 75, the offensive tackle. And so the punting unit on, that's the second consecutive three and out. Markel Pack. Stiff arm. Beauty. Another stiff arm. Gorgeous. Balls out. Fumble. Oh, oh, Not man. so pretty. I think Ole Miss got it back, though. Now you're starting to feel what a rivalry game feels like. You get a great play and a huge hit. A.J. Jefferson, one of those involved. There's Wells. Here's Pat. Stiff arm. Stiff arm. Hit. I think number 32 is strong is the guy who ended up with the football at the end, but there is the hit. It falls out and recovered just as it was going out of bounds. Probably would have gone out of bounds anyway. At a first down 10. And then the little shoving match, 22 and 32. Oh, yeah. Always a lot of that. You know, and, and this is not a normal Mississippi, Mississippi State game. The stakes are so high. says my guy just threw an interception so what I'm going right back to him good read down the middle you got the matchup of the linebacker and throw it Wallace and they're not calling that a touchdown no they are not so his knee must have been down before he reached the ball out keeps it Christian Holmes made the contact. There you are. Oh, they might. They got to review that. They got to review that. I think that's going to be reviewed. I think Bo Wallace got in. I think he spun and his knees never hit the ground on first glance. Steve Landis is the replay official. Uh. Oh, I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't I, think. I think that's going to be a touchdown. 
It sure looks that way. Maybe his shin down here before he spun completely. I don't think so. Remember, it was called no touchdown. Calf? Yeah, that's what I was saying. Maybe right here they could call that before he got there. Vern is on record as a no, I don't think so. I'm, I'm going to waver. It's your are day, you really? It's are you your really? day. No, I it. think they're going to go with the call on the field. Sometimes you just got to take a stance. I, I, well, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Remember, if they don't... Further review. No, 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 oh, you I don't can't. Get a no, chance? no. It's either a touchdown or second and inches. How about that comeback call? Right. I... I you want to switch, and I want to switch. <laughs> I think they were going to call it a touchdown. I'll let you switch if you want. Well, we're amphibious. <laughs> well, okay. we'll just listen to see how it's called. Exactly. Steve Landis talking with us on the left, Dan Mullen on the right. Here's cross to play to the goal line with the ball. <laughs> One for the old Scandinavian. <laughs> that was great effort. Great throw coming off of a interception in the end zone every old Miss fan around has gone oh no old Bo's gonna show up today is it bad Bo today and his coach who told us you know I, I understand Bo has made some bad plays but this program would be nowhere else six nothing and old Miss just received a sideline warning Hugh Freeze, I couldn't read his lips. But I think kidding me was in there. Extra point, Gary Wonderlich, Ryan Buchanan, the backup quarterback, is the holder. Will Denny will snap it back. Good hold. Good kick. Good drive. Well, you got to lay it all out there if you're going to beat Mississippi State and knock off the number four team in the country. And Ole Miss did. Bo Wallace throws an INT. They get the football back after a punt return. And what does the coach say? Let's go right back to our guy. Right down the middle, matchup on the linebacker. You're going to the right guy. And by the way, Mississippi, those were not their starting linebackers. And then after the pass on first down, Bo Wallace spins into the end zone. It's 7 nothing. Dak Prescott, you're on deck. They've won six in a row, and they are going back to Atlanta, and we will see them a week from today against either Alabama or Mississippi State. And I, I can't. I said this earlier on our pregame show, Vern. I can't think of any team that is more looking forward to going back to a site than Ole Miss. The last time they were there, they gave up 545 yards rushing. Right now, they're leading the SEC in rush defense. They can taste wanting to make amends for that game. Nathan Noble is the kickoff man for Ole Miss here. And Brandon Holloway grabs it, takes a knee. And Dak Prescott and Mississippi State still looking for their first first down in the game. Well, we talked about Ole Miss running the ball and how they needed to help their quarterback. I can tell you right now, Hugh Freeze is looking at a stat when he's been here, since he's been at Ole Miss. If he holds his opponents under 150 yards rushing, he wins. And they right now, Mississippi State, minus two yards rushing. Robinson tries to bounce outside and can't. Deterian Shackleford, number 38. Well, they got quick twitch muscles, reflexes up on that defensive line. They move, they stunt. They're not easy targets to block. And those linebackers fill the lanes and make the tackle. Second down, 10. Prescott across the middle caught. First down, Jamian Lewis, number four. Gain of 14, first down. He Dan is Mullen, Excuse me, Byrne. Dan Mullen told us Jamie and Lewis is as healthy as he's been all year. 
and they held out Deronia Wilson a week ago to be 100% today. That is the second first down. I misspoke a moment ago. First down, 10. Prescott. Pressure. Shakes it. Knocked out of bounds by Keith Lewis, number 24. Again, he is playing in the first half for the suspended Sir Darius Bryant. Hugh Freeze insisting yesterday that uh, that was a suspension determined by Ole Miss. Here's the uh, the conflict. Yeah, and without Denzel Kimdichi, and now without Sidarius Bryant, their top two inside linebackers are out of the football game. Second down two. Denzel with an injury, of course, suffered against LSU, and then the first half suspension. This time it's Vidal Brown. Well, pick a guy. Fidal Brown is just making havoc up front by movement and doing things. Third down three. Mississippi State blitzes one third of all the time. Let's see if they come this time. They do. Yes. Prescott pumps, has to run, got the first down. Senquez Golson makes the tackle. Number 21. If you're the defensive coordinator for Ole Miss, you're loving the start of this game. Yes, Dak Prescott picked up the first down, but on both positive plays, Prescott scrambled to his right on a broken play and scrambled for a first down on a broken play. The defense is working. First time Mississippi State has been across midfield. Best drive so far. Here's the option. Prescott pitch. Robinson breaks a tackle. And Keith Lewis makes the stop. A nice run by Josh Robinson, number 14. Dan Mullen has been in a lot of big football games calling plays as an offensive coordinator and now as a head coach. And he knows when you're having trouble blocking the defensive line, you have to give him something different. And that time he gave him the option play and it worked to perfection. Great call from and Dan. First down 10. Give it off to Robinson again. We saw Robinson probably at his spectacular best when he made that run against Kentucky. Of course, he had 197 against LSU, which isn't too shabby either. First 10 rushes 11 yards, and now they've got it going, but it's second down and three. Quarterback draw, no! You can see at the line of scrimmage, crowded right here and continue. They call it a bear look and they blitz and they keep blitzing all game. Third down five after the Tony Connor tackle. And the first quarter comes to a close before the ball can be snapped. And the one in Oxford. Ole Miss on the board. They lead 7 0 and will return to Oxford after this message and a word from your local station. Back in Oxford, we begin quarter number two on this sun-filled but windy afternoon. The Egg Bowl, Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Ali LaForce at Bot Hemingway Stadium. 7-0 the score. And Mississippi State threatening now. Interesting part of the field here. It's in between. I would assume it's pretty close to Dan Mullen thinking four-down territory. 
Dylan Day will snap it back after he makes the line call. Play action. Prescott chased. From behind, he lets it go, and it is incomplete. Now what does Dan Mullen do? Does he go field goal? They're trotting him out. Well, Evan Sobieski has not tried that many this year, but when he has done so, he's been terrific. Nine out of ten. Dak Prescott is the holder. Keep that in mind. And this is uh, a lengthy one. The longest so far this year is 37 yards for Sobieski. This one from 45 yards out and a beauty. Yes. Sobieski missed one at the gun last year in regulation. In fact, Dan went in overtime fourth and two for a touchdown last year. Seven three Ole Miss in this very intense rivalry. For more on that, let's go down to Allen DeForce. Thanks, Vern. It is an intense rivalry, but sometimes it gets taken to the next level too far, if you will. And that happened Tuesday night when Ole Miss received a letter signed Hale State that threatened to damage part of Ole Miss's campus, specifically the Grove. I talked to a campus security officer. He said they had to triple security today around the Grove for game time and throughout the night. But this rivalry can be used for good. And that's what we saw last week when Ole Miss and Mississippi State joined forces for a good cause. Special Olympians and students from both schools came together in Starkville to play in a flag football game dubbed the Unified Egg Bowl, helping to raise awareness and money for Special Olympics programs across the state. Ole Miss did win the game 23-17, and a total of over $12,000 was raised. Thank you, Allie. That's terrific. 45-yard field goal by Sobiesk has put Mississippi State on the board. Only 15 seconds elapsed in the second quarter. Prescott on with the coaching staff upstairs. And the ball blown off the tee. So uh, one of the Bulldogs come in, comes in and will hold it. It's Will Redmond. Seven three. That one's going to be short. Taken at the six. Near side. And out of bounds at the 33 yard line. Well, seven three. What have been your uh, impressions so far? Um, Ole Miss ready to play. Uh, Mississippi State weathered it a little bit and went back to running the ball. And that drive right there, they ran the ball for over 30 yards. They need to help out the quarterback. Mississippi State was counting on a little help from the SEC East against the ACC. Not so good here. Clemson, Georgia Tech, and Louisville have all beaten SEC East teams. Remember, for Mississippi State to get in, they want two teams from this conference. That is not great news. Otherwise, they have to depend on Auburn to beat Alabama. That's worth a move. To. First down, 10. Yeah, Will Walton in the Wildcat, huh? Yeah. A little different. Again, trying to find ways to run the football. Ole Miss has only had two running backs run for over 100 yards in a football game all year. And it was in the same game, Vern, against Presbyterian. Yes. Okay? Yes. I'm saying Presbyterian. You right? did, yes. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I said you that. didn't say Texas but, Lutheran. Yes. You said Presbyterian. <laughs> By the way, Bulldogs 9-2. I just, yeah, I go. Okay. Thank you. Second down and five. Wallace, far side, got a man. Uh, Sanders. How about that throw? Beauty. From the get-go, matched up, a good matchup with Will Redman. Good coverage, better throw. And I think Redman, does he fall right across his ankle on the play or twist it? I'm not exactly sure what happened. But Sanders kind of motions that he needs help or I'm tired, one of the two. Limping, yeah, I think it was the, yes, the first, yes. 
How about that throw? My goodness. First down, 10. That was a game of 30, 7-3. Bobbled in the backfield. And Walton went back behind Bo and recovered it. Had my eyes on the defense. I did not see just a little left. That could have been handled by Bo. Mm -hmm. Remember in the open, uh, Vern, I wondered about the health of Bo Wallace. Uh, he looks good so far. He's not able to run the quarterback draws and the options, but so far he's healthy enough to do the passing game. First uh, and 20, second and 20. And he will go deep on this one. Single coverage, the ball tipped. Cody Core and defended by Tevez Calhoun. Well, we saw Will Redmond bat one out of there with one hand, and this time Calhoun bats one away, and no Odell Beckham Jr. catch to finish it off. That's one of the more amazing catches <laughs> I've yeah, seen. For sure. Out of LSU, now with the Giants, third down and 20. 7-2. Pretty safe defense for Mississippi State. They're 20 yards deep. <laughs> <laughs> they bring three. Crossing pattern, Itavius Mathers. Will Redman with a tackle, and that gives us a chance to go back to Adam Zucker in New York. Hey, Vern, back to Tallahassee. First play after Jameis Winston's third interception. Florida's Treon Harris gets taken the other way, all the way by Terrence Smith. Touchdown for the Knowles, but the Gators still lead 9-7. They can help Mississippi State if the Bulldogs will help themselves. Back to you. All right, Adam, fourth and 13. Gleason is on. And again, that little rugby punt. Oh, he's got a man down. Can he get it? Oh, he okay. dropped it. Yeah. Mike was, Hilton. Yes, Mike Hilton. He, he catches that. It's on a one or two yard line. Florida <laughs> State has one of those games going again where they win and might drop again. That's, that's, I'm just thinking because you <laughs> said that last week. <laughs> it was a perfectly placed punt. Could have been saved, but would have been a spectacular save. Well, remember yesterday, this team from Columbia, Missouri, after a punt down at the two, went 98 yards. Congratulations to the Tigers. We are back in Oxford. Sanders injured just a moment ago. Yeah, Ali uh, told us during the break that uh, something bad could be happening, and we wondered Remember, Sanders immediately signaled. Watch at the end of the catch, and he just turns around and signals to the bench. You know when you're hurt right away, and he knew he was hurt. Now let's go down to Allen the Force. Yeah, guys, you nailed it. Vince is, has suffered a very serious right knee injury. He was laying down on the trainer's table. They were feeling around inside, but he pointed to the outside. And when they put pressure on the outside of his knee, he popped his chest up from the table. It was clearly the spot. That's when they told him the bad news, which I'm waiting for confirmation on. He immediately started crying, and they escorted him back to the locker room. Looks to be pretty serious. Yes. First down, 10. Sanders, one of the 21 seniors, playing his final game here. Brandon Holloway, number 10, gets the carry. Channing Ward, number 11, with the tackle, and the flag is down. During the run, personal foul, hands to the face, number 24, defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. That's Keith Lewis. And the ball marched up to the 35-yard line just beyond that. There's Lewis starting today for the suspended Sidarius Bryant. Bryant out for the first half. 12.03 to go, and here's Prescott, designed run. Short of the first down, Trey Elston, number seven. Well, remember how Dan Mullen got the offense going with the option play for Josh Robinson. You could see he's decided he wants to help the passing game by getting more runs involved. 
Josh Robinson on first down. Dak Prescott follows up on the quarterback keeper. Now they'll come back and throw it. Second and four. Holloway gets the give. Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice recovery. That was really well done. Third down two. Well, maybe they should have. They didn't gain anything. <laughs> Mullen in his sixth season at Starkville. Remember the pressure from the outside that has been a problem. Ashton Shumpert and Prescott will take it, run it. I'll tell you, Dak Prescott, that is the value of having that running quarterback. Blocked very well up front, just a crease as needed, and the power of a quarterback. You know, he's just not a, a fleeting guy doing scrambles. He's making first downs. One third of Dax Prescott's runs this year have produced a first down. First down, 10. Steps up. Nobody open. He'll run. Tries to get around his teammate. Vern, I know you said nobody's open, but a little less pressure this time would have produced a touchdown. Watch this. Ole Miss blows the coverage. It's a play action pass. They do not see it, and they've got a guy running wide open. Just too much pressure too early, or that would have been a touchdown. Somebody was open, obviously. <laughs> yeah. That's the definition of being open. Second down eight. Blitz threatened. Blitz coming. Prescott hit. And goes down. It'll be third down. Brian Bennett was the first one there, number 95. And when you talk to Dan Mullen about the Ole Miss defense, he says half the time they're either blitzing or what he calls a bear defense. That means they cover every defensive offensive line and they attack with their defense. This is a very, very attacking defense. They take plenty of chances. Dave Womack is the defensive coordinator, longtime coordinator at a variety of schools. Third down and nine. They're coming again, I'll tell you that. Prescott in trouble. Caught and dropped. Cody Pruitt snuck over behind Keith Lewis. You knew it was going to be a blitz. When the safety goes over and covers up right behind the linebacker, you know that linebacker's coming. And again, pressure from an aggressive defensive call. On fourth and eight, Devin Bell on to punt for the third time. Markel Pack is at the five-yard line. Turn on all the way and a fair catch called for and taken at the 16 yard line. Yard 31 yard punt, but he pinned him inside the 20. 7 3. Right back. Seven three Ole Miss with the lead. Bo Wallace gimping. He was. But, but you know, uh, he made one mistake early. He's actually throwing this ball right at the goalpost for a post pattern, but they were not on the same page. But then Hugh Freeze, the next time Ole Miss gets the football, comes right back to his quarterback, and it pays off for a touchdown. You know, very well, I liked. It's the sophistication of these fans with Bo Wallace. You know, he's had his struggles, but the Ole Miss fans appreciate what Bo Wallace has brought to the program. When he was introduced for senior day, those Ole Miss fans cheered wildly for him. They know what Hugh Sell told us. He was the transition guy to take Ole Miss from where they were to where they want to eventually go. They will be in their third consecutive bowl game under Hugh Freeze. And under Bo Wallace. First down 10. This is Mark Dodson, his first carry. Mentioned earlier, they will use four running backs, and it's been an effective ground game so far. And on six. 
Second down, six. Cody Core is back on the field offensively now in the slot. Second down and six. Up the middle. Mark Dodson, number seven. There's Core. Yeah. Hey. See that in there. I'm sorry, Gary. No, go ahead. Is, that's his last two eight bowl appearances. Here two years ago, obviously, five touchdown passes. Last year, not as much. By the way, Jamerson Love is back in the football game up at the top of the screen. So that's good news for Mississippi State. Third and four. Three man rush. Incomplete over the head of Evan Ingram. Fourth down. Well, without the with the injury now to Sanders, remember Laquan Treadwell right there. Without Treadwell, that's two of their top receivers on this football team down. And this Mississippi State defense now their stats are not great in pass defense. But remember, they've had a lot of big leads, and they've had more passes thrown at their defense than any team in the SEC by quite a bit. Here's Gleason to punt, and Fred Ross is deep. Fair catch. He grabbed it. Well, Laquan Treadwell injured at the goal line when he was going in for the go-ahead score against Auburn, and we are told that he's on schedule and might be back in the spring. All of us hope so. Best player on the Ole Miss squad. Well, I hate to see that. We saw him opening game of the year against Navy. And man, oh man, did he come on as the season progressed. He sure did. I mean, what a story. Losing Braxton Miller. That was the two-time MVP of the Big Ten and still be in a position to win the Big Ten. What if they do it with their third string quarterback? How will the committee react to that? Who could lose two quarterbacks and still win a championship? That's quite a testament to Urban Meyer. First down 10. Best starting field position today. Prescott pulls it back, fires it deep. Almost picked off. Oh, brother. Cliff Coleman, number six. Well, remember the last time we showed you the guy that was wide open down the seam? This time, they go right back to the same play. But Coleman helps on it. He knows he's going to get coverage underneath, and he falls back underneath it. No way Dak Prescott knew that Coleman was going to be there on that play. On second and ten, Prescott back. He comes right oh, yeah. side, nice. and it's bobbled and dropped. And Senquez Golson was popped after the play. No flag thrown so far. I think that's a nice no call. Do you? I do. Okay. Fred Brown, the intended receiver. He was riding the player, and the guy goes, get off him, man. Man, well, well, come on. It is football. Yeah, right? watch, watch. He's on top of him here as he gets up, and he goes, get off of him. No big deal. Golson thought he was in a rodeo. Third and ten. Prescott got him to run you, Wilson. Well, Ole Miss Burn continues to blitz and watch the running back get run over. But Prescott moves up in the pocket and makes the throw. That's Shumpert who just got run over. Yeah. And this yeah. time he doesn't run very far. Well, <laughs> he was the guy that was shoving, right? Yeah. The last play? Right. He shoves better than he blocks. Let me say that. <laughs> 6.15 to go. First half. Second down, nine. That has been a problem for Ole Miss, picking up the blitzes with their running, excuse me, for Mississippi State all game so far. Prescott keeps it. Dertarian Shackleford, number 38, wearing ever so proudly the number that was worn in the late 80s by Chucky Mullins. 
Shackelford, the only two-time winner of the Chucky e. Mullins Award. He's in his sixth season. He set out two full years. And the young man has his master's degrees degree. He's working on his doctorate. Victorian Shackelford. Third down six. Left side. Run your Wilson. No. Talked about the quickness of that Ole Miss defense. Watch these defensive players react and change as the play goes on. Oh, they're going for it on they fourth are down. On fourth down, left side. Ole Miss takes a timeout, but did you see those defensive players react to the quick screen? No space. Fourth and three. Be right back. When our national security is threatened, she's our first line of defense. Taya Leone stars in the new hit drama, Madam Secretary. That's tomorrow after 60 minutes, only CBS. Take a look, Gary, at that last defensive play. Yeah, one more time, how impressed I am with the speed and quickness of that land shark defense. You know, sharks can turn and attack. Look at those three guys turn and eat up the space on that play. Nice allegory. Yeah. Yeah. You know, interesting decision by Dan Mullen. Mississippi State is struggling with two receivers injured and a quarterback nick. Do they really want to go for it here, or should they play field position? Now Prescott looks back at the bench. To run your Wilson and Janie and Lewis, top of the screen. Fourth and three. Prescott, this is right. Played quarterback all one, two. the way. Yep. Yeah, I, I'm a little surprised considering that Ole Miss is hurting on offense. Why not just punt that ball down there and make him go? The safety is lined up here and he is ready for the quarterback keeper and nothing, nothing. Remember, you're trying to go on fourth down against one of the premier third and fourth down defenses in the country and they ate that play up and that was Keith Lewis number 24 down low to make the initial contact Dak Prescott that one didn't work first down 10 under five to go just think about it Ole Miss is struggling with the running game down two of their best receivers and now they have really nice field position almost broke it to Jalen Walton he does get out to the 43 Second down three. It must look, I love the patience of Hugh Freeze with the running game. Jalen Walton is at 43 yards. Remember, they haven't had anything from a running back all year. Now they hurry up, get in the center. Wallace dropped. Quincy Adebojo. Richie Brown was defending on the play, made the tackle. Sure did. They've got their 1B linebackers back in, and Richie Brown makes a wonderful play. Knew right where to go. As soon as he saw it was a pass, he went right to his first curl route, and he was there. Third down three. 4-18 to go first half. Walton alongside Bo Wallace. Just two for six on third down, as you can see from that little drop down from the score there. Evan Ingram, left side. That's Walton in motion. Underneath, flag call. Yeah, but it wasn't on the pass play. It was inside on the offensive line. It's either going to be a hand to the face or holding by Ole Miss. It was not on the defended pass. Personal foul. Chop block number 75 and number 73 have penalties declined fourth down. So two players were engaged at the same time 75 and 73. Let's guess these guys, okay? Let's see what happens. Two players, it's a stunt. They both go for the same. They didn't even knock them down. 
Maybe it was somebody else. I might be off on that one. Well, they called him on Robert Conyers, 75, yeah. and Rod Taylor. Yeah, but even if it was no call, it's the same difference. Mississippi State had defended the play, yep. and they're going to get the ball back. And now Gary Wonderlich will punt, not Will Gleason. Fred Ross will let it bounce. Oof. Oh, that was close. <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> A 47 yard punt, nothing on the return. The West standings. Alabama, of course, playing Auburn tonight in Tuscaloosa. For Mississippi State to advance to Atlanta, they've got to have Auburn win tonight. Alabama is into the championship game if they win over Auburn, or if Ole Miss wins this game. And there's the scenario for Mississippi State. Two paths, though. Get back yeah. into the championship or win and stay in the fourth spot. First down, 10. Robinson. Well, one thing about the Egg Bowl, and they talked about what a bitter rivalry it is, and Dan Mullen told Alley beforehand, 63 of the 105 players on this roster are from the state of Mississippi. Only 44 from Ole Miss. Dan has built his team recruiting the state of Mississippi. Second down and 10. Robinson comes out near the 18-yard line. Well, Dan Mullen, sixth year, he was uh, offensive coordinator under Urban Meyer, Bowling Green, Utah, and then Florida. Now, he has gotten so into this rivalry, he refused to call them Ole Miss. He says, that team up north. Right. This is from a guy who was raised in Manchester, New Hampshire, and went to Ursinus College. But he, but he knew he had to pick a fight with somebody yeah. to build the program, and he smartly did it. Third down, four. Penetration again. Prescott hit again. I think it was Robert Kimdichi this time that got the penetration. I'm not sure. We have not called his name, but penetration early just blew up this play. Let's see if it came from Kimdichi. Yes, it was. Kimdichi follows one guy and allows the linebackers to clean it up. That's your job. Get penetration. And Kimdichi, who ran the ball last year in this football game, a couple good ones, a couple not so good ones. Star recruit out of the class of 2011. His brother Denzel, Gary mentioned earlier, is out with an injury for the rest of the season. A linebacker. Here's Pack. After Devin Bell's punt, 42 yards. Nothing on the return. 7-3. And a reminder, we'll be going back to our New York studios for the Geico halftime report. Late in the season, rivalry Sunday. Much, much on the line for a lot of teams in college football, including Mississippi State. And they trail 7-3 with 2.03 to go. Devontae Kincaid is in as a wide receiver. Here's the reverse. He's a backup quarterback. A flag is down. Well, a little trickeration. Good job from no the flag, booth I'm up sorry. here. I'll give yep. it credit to you. Well, and I'm going to give credit to Butch Barrett. There you go. I just, My I, it's your, your call. Oh. <laughs> but uh, Butch hey, noticed that right away. Ready. And by the way, so did Ole Miss. They were ready for it. Second down eight. I thought I saw a piece of yellow cloth. Obviously, the eyes are going. 1.30 to go. First half. Wallace. Now, I think the two receivers tripped over each other that time. Now, remember, keep going back to the fact that Ole Miss is down two of their key receivers. You got a quarterback gipping around that can't run the ball, and they trip each other up. Cody Core and Markel Pack were the two involved in that uh, ankle-like collision. Third down, eight. Bo Wallace has missed his last four passes. Looks like a corner blitz. Wallace near side, got it. 
leads out for the first down, and they are not, no, they're not. going it's to give short. it to him. And remember that Mississippi State gets the football to start the second half. That's a huge stop, a good tackle from the secondary, and just a half yard short. Jay Hughes, nice Four tackle. And one. Jay Hughes, whose father, Tony, is one of the assistant coaches upstairs in the coach's box. Fourth and one. I mean, Hugh Freeze has to punt this ball. He may use a timeout, and he may try to draw him off sides. I just can't believe they're going to go for it. Their defense is doing a good job, Ole Miss is. You can't give them a short field right now. Uh, the spot of the ball is under review. Okay. Just heard that. I, I know everybody's lobbying down there. The players are lobbying. You know, I, I, I heard this one time before, Vern. A player never thinks he's going to lose a game. A coach never thinks they're going to win a game. <laughs> the players will think they're just impervious. There you go. It's yeah. closer than we yeah, thought, though. Yeah. It's going to be very close. Now, was his foot out before it was stretched? The ball was stretched out. No, so they could use that other picture of the ball being stretched out much closer. That's within inches of the yellow line. Remember, the yellow line is just an approximation of where the first down is. Here's a little bit of a wider shot. It's just at the yard line right there. I think it's right at the 48. It looked to me where the ball was. Steve Landis is the replay official longtime referee in the SEC I think you can move that ball up two feet okay not past the yard next yard line but right up to the edge of that next yard line and then you'd come in and measure it after that Vern, you're hot today we're gonna to put that football <laughs> Uh, right there at the 48 yard line. Right, just in, right. right on the edge of the white, I yep. think. Hey, I, you and I are currents again. Okay, Landis has made his decision. So now that's a little bit different. Now, do you bring in Jeremy Liggins, the big uh, tight end quarterback? Because it's going to be, it, if they move it up, it's going to be inches. Either way, whether that's it's a first Liggins. down or short. The ruling on the field stands, fourth down. There we go. Boy, I'll never get that minute back in my life. <laughs> <laughs> he said with a slight degree of cynicism. <laughs> Why do we do this? <laughs> I don't know. Will Gleason will punt. Fourth down. <laughs> I was dependent on you there, Bert. Uh, well. I'm not anymore. Fourth and one, and uh, Fred Ross is back. There's the rugby punt. Fair catch at the 11 yard line. And now it's time to take a look at our Home Depot tools for success. Here's Gary. Well, if you've got a, a good toolbox, you got to use it. And if you can move fast, you move them. If you're big and strong, you stand and take on the blocks. But this Ole Miss defense can move, and Dave Warnock has them moving at different angles and blitzing on every play. He's got a quick toolbox, and he's using it. Those of you who were with us last week recall that I had <laughs> one shot to do that, and according to my partner, I flunked. <laughs> They handed it back. <laughs> First down, 10. Very dangerous time. They have their timeouts, but it's a long way to go. A Mississippi State mistake here would be brutal. Sweep left. Robinson, nothing. Deterian Shackelford, number 38, with another tackle. Trying to get the crowd. He's, he's a remarkable young He really is. We visited with him last time we were here prior to the Alabama game. Yep. Great leader and pretty good football player. Indeed. Remember a year ago at this same situation, Mississippi State had to punt, got a punt blocked, 
for a touchdown, the only score of the game for Ole Miss. So if they stop him here, Hugh Freeze will take a timeout. Second down eight. Play action. Prescott. The Runya Wilson. And he had progress for the first down. Mike Hilton defending. And I think uh, Dan Mullen remembered that too. He did not want to punt out of his own end zone. He trusts his quarterback. Easy pitch and catch for a first down. I don't think they're going to snap it again. No. But you could tell by the play call, he did not want to punt. He remembers the games a year ago, too. Well, the task for Mississippi State was to win and win convincingly. Not so far. In either category. At the half, 7-3, Ole Miss leads it in the Egg Bowl. 111th playing of the same. Let's go down to Allie the Force with Hugh Freeze. Coach, your defense has been one step ahead of Mississippi State. How have you been able to hold them to just three first half points? Well, we've got a pretty good defense. You know, we've been very good all year on defense. And, um, you know, uh, we always have a good plan. Our kids are playing hard. We've eliminated the explosive plays, I think, which is big against this group. Um, but we've had our chances to get some points, turn over in the red zone, get inside the 50 and snap it over our quarterback's head. Those negative plays we've got to cut out. But I feel really good about our plan and the way we're playing. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Hugh Freeze, and lest there be any doubt, he grew up in Senatobia, Mississippi, <laughs> about a half an hour away. 7-3 at the half. Ole Miss leads it. Let's go back to New York. The Geico Halftime Report coming up. Adam Zook. All right, thanks, Vern. Coming up here on the Geico Halftime Report, Spencer, Brian, and I will tell you about how Ohio State won its rivalry game but lost a lot more after this word from your local station. CBS Sports presents the Geico Halftime Report. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Geico Halftime Report. I'm Adam Zucker with the score in Oxford. Ole Miss leading Mississippi State 7-3. to three. I'm joined by Spencer Tillman and Brian Jones. Bo Wallace shook off that early interception. It's been an Ole Miss kind of game so far. Well, we said in the pregame that Hugh Freeze told me that they had to play clean. You had an errant snap by your center. That was problematic. Yeah. Execution needs to get improved there. And then the interception. Bo Wallace had not thrown an interception at home, and he's done so. If they clean up those two areas, we've got an upset in the making. Well, what's been problematic? Problematic for Mississippi State is that Ole Miss defense. Hey, they come into this game, lead the SEC, Mississippi State does, with 511 yards of total offense per game, 128 right now. They're not even halfway close mm -hmm. to that total. Yeah. All right, Mississippi State, of course, with a lot to play for. Georgia thought they 30 points. All right, let's now revisit our interactive question of the week. Final results are in. The question was, if both Mississippi State and Alabama win today, will Mississippi State make the college football playoff? 78% of you saying yes. Let us know if you agree with the results. Could not matter if Mississippi State goes down. Uh, join the conversation on Twitter and Facebook at SEC on CBS. When we come back, we'll talk about the race for the number four spot in the college football playoff when the Geico Halftime Report continues. The Home Depot, SEC on CBS, is sponsored by K Jewelers, Napa, Kellogg's Frosted Flake Cereal, and by Chick-fil-A. Halftime in Oxford, Mississippi, and the Ole Miss Rebels lead Mississippi State 7-3. Tomorrow on CBS, Simon Baker is back for the final season of The Mentalist. Tomorrow, after Madam Secretary only, CBS. Many great traditions abound on game day throughout the league, and each week will give you a taste of tradition presented by Sonic. For more, here's Allie. Okay, Vern, here's the story on how this game became known as the Egg Bowl. After an Ole Miss victory in 1926 in Starkville, a brawl ensued between the fans. The following year, by joint agreement of both student bodies, a trophy was introduced to promote sportsmanship. The trophy was a gold-plated football mounted on a pedestal, but because the ball was oblong and shaped more like an egg, it was named the Golden Egg Trophy. 
In 1978, with no postseason berth in sight for either team, a Clarion Ledger sports writer called this a bowl game, and the headlines throughout the week followed the Egg Bowl theme. And as the saying goes, the rest is history. Indeed it is. And just uh, to be legally correct, this is the 77th playing of the Egg Bowl, the 111th meeting of these two nasty rivals. Back for the third quarter after these messages. There's a start. It stopped this offense as itself. They've got to stay on schedule. It's a confident bunch going into this second half. Sun setting over Oxford, Mississippi, halftime. 7-3 Ole Miss leading the fourth-ranked Mississippi State Bulldogs. Now let's go inside the headset powered by AT&T, official sponsor of the SEC. Here's Allie with Dan Mullen. Coach, Ole Miss was really bringing the pressure with the blitz in the first half. How do you get Dak and the offense going? Well, you know, I mean, we just got to execute a little bit cleaner up front, give them a little bit more time so we can take some shots down the field. And we got to do it better. They've done, they've done a great job with the field position in the first half. We've been back to the wall the entire first half, so uh, we got to do a good, better job flipping field position. You held Ole Miss to just seven points offensively. What's working on defense? Our guys are playing hard, you know. I think our guys are playing really hard on defense. We're running the football. We gave up the one. We had a blown cover and give up a one long pass but overall our guys are playing hard and that's the most important thing. Thanks, Good luck the thank half. Ali, thank you. 7-3 in Oxford. Needless to say a sellout. 60,000 plus here in Vaught Hemingway. And Mississippi State will get the ball to open the third quarter having won the toss and deferred Jamie and Lewis see who else is back and the kick will be authored by Gary Wonderland. Nope, it's not. Nathan Noble again. And here is the return. Down at the 24 yard line. Well, Gary, what's your key so far? What? Neither team could run the ball. Neither okay. team could pick up the blitz. Uh, it hasn't been sloppy like last year's game. Right. I wonder if, you know, I think everybody's going to catch this whole path here. You know, more pressure, obviously, on Mississippi State because what's happened today with the SEC losing all these games, Mississippi State needs to make a statement beyond just winning the football game. I think, you know, yes, they could get some help from Auburn, but they... They can't count on anything there. 7-3 as we get underway with the first play from scrimmage. Prescott goes right side. And incomplete to Runya Wilson, the intended receiver. Second down, 10. Sometimes when you're having trouble picking up the pass rush, you throw more because you just say, let's try to slow down this pass rush by throwing quicker, shorter passes. Perhaps that's where Dan reaches. Second and ten. Prescott pressured. Prescott down. Tony Connor, number 12. The nickelback. This is the second or third time Josh Robinson has not been able to handle the blitz. Tony Connor is a hybrid outside linebacker or defensive back. And again, not centered up by your running backs. I mean, we talked about it just two seconds ago. I'm sure I saw Dan Mullen talking to Josh Robinson earlier that you got to center up those blitzes. He did not do it. Third down, 15. Prescott goes right again. Keeps it, rather. Pumped it to the right. I thought Kendichi had a chance to get a sack here, and he just stopped in the middle of the play. 
Watch him get great penetration inside. When he spins, he just kind of stops. See, he could have had, he kind of lost where the football was and allowed Dak to gain an extra 10 or 12 yards. Very fortunate for Ole Miss that he didn't pick up the first down. All right, we'll be fourth and one. Devin Bell is on the punt, and Markel Pack. This will be the fifth punt for Bell in the ball game. He moves laterally to his right. And he killed this punt. Did he ever? Fair catch called by Pack, but he's well inside the tip. Yeah, and, and Dan Mullen just told Allie about the bad field position, and they produce good field position, bad field position for Ole Miss. First half trend. You got it, Bo Wallace. You know, it's the same old thing. Bo makes plays, Bo yeah. makes mistakes. Has not been able to run the football at all, though, with that ankle. Dak Prescott it looks like he's throwing the ball well, but really no yards. And you know, you look at the total yards, this is one of the most explosive offenses in this league. By the way, that 128 fewest this season, last year in the April, they only had 105 in the first half against Ole Miss. So back to back years, Ole Miss shuts down this offense. Jalen Walton is the running back. Play action. Well, inaccurate. They, yeah, it's sure inaccurate. Was. You know, the biggest defense, though, a year ago, Mississippi State was playing with a true freshman quarterback. This year, they're playing with a guy for a long time was being talked as a Heisman candidate. So you got to put that throw into the body, inaccurate, and almost impossible to catch with a short throw like that. So this Ole Miss defense has done much better this year because last year they were facing a true freshman quarterback. Wallace. Nice defensive play at the last minute. Intended for Cody Core and Deontay Evans, number 17, made the stop. Yeah, this ball was a little late this time and allowed Evans to make the play. Ball hung up again just enough, and Deontay Evans, number 17, lets the play. If the ball could have been thrown a little earlier, Caleb Ewells would not be able to get a hit on him, number one and might have got it there before the play was made. Wallace is one of his last seven passes, and it's third and 10 here at the eight yard line. Whoops, he got back. Wallace deep again, overthrows an open receiver. There is a flag, perhaps he did not get back. Will Redman was the guy trying to get across the line of scrimmage in a hurry. Offside. Defense number two, five yard penalty, replay third down. I thought it was really close to Redmond jumping back on the play. It was right on the edge. I'm now one for three, so I'm gonna lay out. Yes, yeah. we're, we're both, we're of should. Not, both of us should. We're not having a high school <laughs> <type>, Exactly. So <laughs> that is the first penalty for Mississippi State in the ballgame. And it's third down five. Defensively, left side overthrown. Fourth down. Yeah, again, not being able to step into that throw. Ball sailed on him. You know, sometimes coming out at half, you can see as Bo limps off. You know, maybe he got a little stiff in the locker room, didn't get warmed up enough. But n none of those throws to start out the second half were even close. And you see Bo say, "My fault." Fourth down five. Will Gleason is the punter. Fred Wallace back to return it. He is uh, backed up inside his 40-yard line. Fair catch call for and taken at the 38. 49-yard punt, nothing on the return. Defensive units have been the standout elements thus far in the game. Time call. Seven three Ole Miss over Mississippi State. The Bulldogs have the ball. Pretty good field position now at the 38. So much conversation, Gary, about that fourth spot in the college football playoff. Well, it's the game within the game. And of course, first of all, Mississippi State has to win this game. Their argument is the SEC West has controlled college football. When they played these guys 
they beat teams and made them not as good. But TCU has an argument too. Look how many teams they've played at that time. Pretty good resume. Ohio State, of course, they had the bad laws and only two games. Of course, the best one was Michigan State. Baylor, of course, they beat TCU and they've got two games, but they all are not done yet. And that's the last phase of this. Today, Ole Miss, the Big Ten Championship without JT Barrett, and of course, Kansas State still on the docket. So those people that fly around at committee, still a lot to talk about. Ooh. And they will release their final standings after the championship games and the final regular season games next Saturday. Here's Janion Lewis coming back. So, yep. If this is against Mississippi State, it sure is. It'll negate a 17 yard gain. I think it's playing Clausel number 75 against Trey Elson. Run holding number five offense. 10 yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Replay first down. Could have called it on two guys that were acting right here. We're going to have both of, both of them in your picture. It's either here or here. They called it on the bottom play. First. <laughs> he saw, he? saw Trey the day. Yeah. He was selling it as good as he could. It looked like he was doing a Luganus. And he didn't get it. Off the diving board. <laughs> First down, Prescott. This is Fred Ross, number eight. Big and time play by Dak Prescott on that one. He throws this ball under duress. Watch, makes the play fake, and he's got pressure as he lets it go and gets it out there quick. There's no way that if he waits one more second, Byron Brennan, number 20, 95, would have tackled him. That, a 24-yard gain and up the middle goes Ashton Shumpert, number 32. Loosen them up with a little bit of a passing game, and now they up-tempo it. Oh, oh, brother. No one was ready on this one. Oh, oh, this oh. Oh. That almost hit Prescott in the, in the helmet. Yes, Mississippi State wasn't ready for the snap. Ole Miss wasn't ready for the snap as well. They tried to get a substitution. No one's really ready. And another positive play for Mississippi State. Second down. Prescott fakes it. Tries to run it, then has to throw it. And he was pressured by Channing Ward, number 11. Third and five. Well, they're not quite in that red zone. But remember against Alabama. They entered the red zone six times and only got 14 points. That's been one of the problems. They're not there yet, but it's almost red zone type play. And it is third down and five. Hand off Shumpert right side. First down. Well, they're there now, aren't they? Indeed. That's a gain of 15. Pull the guard. Bring the receiver around to the outside. You get Gus Wally, number 19, making a play. Well-designed play. First down goal, Mississippi State. Here is Prescott up the middle. Opposing teams have seen that a few times. And the Verizon red zone offense for Mississippi State. Touchdown percentage 67. That's uh, just above the national average. He got hurt. Did, Corbin, I think did, he did. Prescott get hurt yeah. on the play? But holding his hand. Second and goal. I thought the same thing. Shumpert stopped between the one and the two. Well, as I mentioned before, last year in overtime, Dan Mullen did not go for the field goal right about this situation on fourth down. Would he think two tries for the touchdown if he needs it? That's when Dak Prescott came off the bench, didn't expect to play in that game. And here we go again. 
Oh, I think he's across. Yes. Touchdown. That's power, isn't it? Mississippi State, and they've got the lead. The ball popped out, but they say he crossed the plane before the ball came out. Same basic play he ran a year ago. Power with the quarterback, and that's a touchdown. Reached it over, and when the ball hit the ground, it popped out. Remember, he started the burn, the started the drive with that pass to the outside and came back with the running play. Clearly a touchdown. And the drive for the extra point and player is down for Ole Miss. Looks like C.J. Johnson, number 10. Uh, Shepard, a big part of that drive. Sure was. Uh, good play calling, too. Nice mix of plays that time. Used the play action pass. Mixed it up with the sweeps. Kept Ole Miss off balance with the tempo. Evan Sobiesk. And the Bulldogs lead the Rebels by three. Well, when the play works, it's usually because the quarterback works. And in this series, the quarterback worked. Started off with the play action pass, got rid of it really quickly, came back down, moved it into positive territory, and then showed the power that Dan Mullen needs in his short yardage spread attack. Jack Prescott, can he get him to the playoffs? The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. Ford. LG G3. And by Wheels Up. Ah, beautiful shot of the moon over Oxford, Mississippi. 10-7. Dak Prescott, Heisman Trophy candidate, though he's... Uh, at least if you take the straw vote, his uh, prospects have diminished. But that leads us to the Aflac trivia question. The only Mississippi State player to finish in the top ten of the Heisman Trophy voting. I'm guessing against many people getting this. <laughs> Just saying. Well, the guy sitting to your right of you is not going to get it, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Mississippi State leads. Logan Cook will kick off. Jalen Walton is the deep man for the Rebels. Mark Dodson is also back. Returnable from the one. Jalen Walton. Not very far, huh? Number six, Jalen Walton on the return tackle number 15. JT Gray with the tackle. And how about Bo Wallace the last drive? Yeah, as good as Dak was, is as bad as Bo was. Inaccurate, late, and when you have a spread offense, you're depending on your guys to do it. Well, the last four Ole Miss drives have been three and out. First down, 10. Itavius Mathers. Number five is the running back. Rock Conyers in at center now. This one. Oh, boy. Evan Ingram is off to the races. Evan Ingram at the 10, down at the 2. <laughs> you got to have a guy that can throw strikes. We talked about it. If your quarterback can't hit the guys, you got no chance. And this time, they put the tight end on a beautiful route. Did you see him fake to the outside? And Ingram set it up. A tight end down to the one yard. Look familiar? This happened last time. Remember, Bo kept it and scored. Liggins in. And he's going to get the snap. 
Liggins, not this time. It was not, was it? Bernardrick McKinney made the stop. Second and goal. That last pass play, 83 yards. Second and goal. Looks like Liggins will stay in. Six three, two ninety six. He's a large man. Well, I wonder if he can throw a jump pass or not. Because uh, uh, he's going to earn every yard if he runs it. There's the shift defensively. They hand it off. Jordan Wilkins. Touchdown. Ole Miss. Wallace limps back, but he did his job, threw an arc accurate pass, got him down there, and then as he falls forward, it's close, isn't it? And I'm laying out, and I'm laying out. Okay. <laughs> Under review. He has the ball in his right hand, and he turns as he's falling. Our record has not been uh, exemplary today. Oh, knee down Whoa, right there. Yeah. Was it? Well, this time I'm saying short. I'm just short. saying short. Yep, yep. Let's see. It'll be overturned. He got hit hard on the play. I, I think his knee came down. His yep. left knee came down, and it's short by a half yard, and it'll be third down. Right there <laughs> okay <laughs> Vern there's your new color analyst right there <laughs> you make the call <laughs> remember that series from yes. years and years ago again Steve Landis the review official. Play a Jay Hughes had a huge hit on the play. And I think even Hugh Freeze knows this one short. After review, the runner was down at the three-quarter yard line. It'll be third down from the three-quarter yard line. Third down goal. Bo staying on the sideline. Yes. Runner stay with Liggins. Liggins with two touchdowns. One touchdown for the year. Liggins. Back time with a forward. <laughs> Land shark move. <laughs> uh, maybe not. Well, Hugh Freeze had commitment in this formation. Well blocked. It's in there by Nicholas Parker, number 34. Did a good job of taking up the edge and allowed Liggins and everything he brought to get into the end zone. But how about that first down pass? And if you weigh that much and you score a quarterback, they put you in a tight end on the extra point. <laughs> Gary Wonderlick out of Memphis. Hour and a half north of Oxford. Will attempt the extra point. Ryan there he Buchanan is. holds it. Tight end. Mm -hmm. And the Rebels have reclaimed the lead. How? How about the belief in Hugh Freeze and Bo Wallace? Remember when he threw the interception, he came right back with the first down call to set up a touchdown. Now, after three straight incompletions, he goes to the tight end. Ingram runs a wonderful pass route, and Bo Wallace puts it right in. One little block, 
and it might have been a walk-in, but they kept the drama, and on the third try, touchdown. Bo Wallace, cheerleader on that last touchdown play. Don't forget, later in the game, the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. 14-10, Ole Miss in four plays. And the big one, of course, was the fast Evan Ingram. That's a pretty shot, isn't it? Mississippi State needs to win. A needs to win convincingly B to hang on to that fourth spot. Nathan Noble will kick off. Good one. That'll be a touchback. Well, let's go back to the studio for a Ford update. Here is Adam. All right, Vern, after trailing Minnesota 17-3, Wisconsin scored 17 straight. Corey Clement giving the Badgers the nifty moves and their first lead of the day. The winner here takes the Big Ten West and faces Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship next week. Buckeyes now led by Cardale Jones at quarterback. Guys. All right, Adam, thank you. 14-10 here, Prescott back on. He has rushed 18 times already, but for a very modest 42 yards. Long gain of 14, and he is 9 of 15, throwing the ball. Mississippi State's safeties within seven yards of line of scrimmage. They are crowding the run. Josh Robinson, the running back, does not get the handoff. Here's Prescott. Man for man coverage. It's caught. Fred Ross in stride. There's no safeties back there, and Dak Scott saw exactly what we did. Dak Prescott goes, you safeties want to sneak in here on the run game? I could throw a post. Look at those guys. Nobody deep. And just like Bo Wallace, Dak Prescott puts it right on the dot. Beautiful. Here's the handoff to Robinson. That was Mike Hilton defending for Ole Miss. Nearing the midway point, quarter number three. This game is getting interesting, isn't it? It is. And I, and I watched last year's game. It was such a sloppy game. This is a really good football game. Second down, six, four-man front. They bring five. Prescott pumps, goes wide right for Ross, and it's overthrown. It's a way to read your keys. If you're the Ole Miss defense in that one, that was that play-action pass that Dan Mullen made famous at Florida with Tim Tebow. It's a quarterback play action pass faking to no one. You just fake the run and Ole Miss stayed home and covered it very well. Third down six. Three wide right, two left. Prescott takes off, but not very far. Robert Kemditchie. DG. Quarterback draw. It didn't work earlier. It didn't this time. Kim DG gets off the block and makes the play and forces. Remember again, another red zone opportunity. Last time they scored, this time, not yet. Prescott will hold Evan Sobiesk from 34 yards out. Uh oh. Wide right. Not yet. Oh, the laces were right into the kicker. Did you see that? It was ball was not spun, and that might have been just enough for that ball not to turn over. Look at how upset the holder is. He knew it. It was Dak Prescott. And here's Dak Prescott. Well, he started the drive with a 53-yard perfect pass on first down. But 
after the quarterback draw, Dak the holder does not do it a great job. He sees the ball goes wide, and believe me, I've held before. I've done that before, and I would be as upset as Dak is. You know part of your job is to get those laces turned. Well, it remains a four-point difference in this ballgame. 6.43 to go in the third quarter. Wallace gives it to Jalen Walton. Well, time to queue up the duck. I just wonder how many got the answer to this one. The Aflac trivia question Aflac. and the answer is, who is the only Mississippi State player to finish in the top 10? Thomas Shorty McWilliams. He finished 10th in 1944. Neither of us had that. Good picture, though. It is. <laughs> is he a punter? Well, it must have been. <laughs> oh, my two. goodness. He's a punter, too. Yeah. Oh. Ah, Evan Ingram broke a tackle and fights his way to the 43-yard line. Zach Jackson, that's a 35-yard game. I mean, how about this performance? You freeze. Talk to us that there was no way he was going to be able to keep Bo Wallace out of this game. Now, has he played perfect? He never does, okay? <laughs> but he has made some fantastic throws. I think back to that Alabama game when they won right here when we were, he was six for nine for 105 yards and two TDs in the fourth quarter. He's just starting a little earlier this time. First down 10, 35 yard gain on the last play. And Conyers remains at center. Play action, Wallace. Quincy Adeboyjo. Boy, there's no defending this type of throw. Jamerson Love is in coverage. Not great coverage, but the ball is thrown high to the inside. You're not going to stop it. You get a hot quarterback, it's going to work. Jalen Walton will go wildcat on this play. Takes the snap, heads left, cuts right. Okay. No, we tried I that. wouldn't have done that. I mean, you got a pretty hot quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> you take him out. But Q's been hot calling plays today, so it's hard to really go against him. But Bo's going, you know, Coach, pretty, feeling pretty good right now. <laughs> Fight should be on the sideline. Second down nine, Zach Prescott looks on. Back out there. Yeah. Stash that one. Second and nine, 14 10, four and a half to go. Third quarter. Walton in motion. Wallace left. He's got a man open again. Ingram, no. He could not. He was juggling it as he went across the sideline. Every Ole Miss fan holds their breath when. Bo Wallace throws to the left sideline. He's had three of them intercepted like that. That one was dropped. Boy, Ingram tried, didn't he? Uh, I don't think so, folks. Third and nine. Ingram has had a wonderful day. Four catches, 171 yards. Yeah, that qualifies. Yeah. He's in the slot. Wallace gets a good block. And Ingram, it's a little behind him. Yep. Don't you think? Well, remember, Hugh Freeze went with the Wildcat on first down. And that means Bo had to come back in only two opportunities to pick up the first down. Through one good pass on second down. And then on third down, Ingram runs a nice route. And the ball's behind him. That's going to bring on Gary Wonderlick, who became the full-time place kicker mid-season. His long as 47, 4 of 5 for the year. This one from 39. It is up, and he has nailed it.
Well, it's the battle for the Golden Egg Trophy. I don't know. You think? Heisman Watch presented by Nissan. We've had some good bow in our game. Baylor's getting good Bryce. Bryce Petty and company, no trouble scoring against Texas Tech. He has two touchdown passes and a 35-17 to 17 lead. Marcus Mariota in the Civil War tonight. 42 total touchdowns already. Amari Cooper hoping for big grabs in the Iron Bowl. As we go back to the Egg Bowl, Burn and Gary. All right, Adam, thank you. 17-10 here. Ole Miss leading over Mississippi State. As you said, it's getting very interesting. Oh, absolutely. Remember, at one time in this season, both of these teams on that weekend when we were here ended up number three in the country. That's right. Tied for third. And that was when uh, the guys in red handed Alabama its only defeat of the year, then the heartbreaking loss to Auburn. That included the loss of Laquan Treadwell. And they have lost their last three SEC West games. Well, we're moving on to Atlanta from here. Congratulations to the Missouri Tigers. They knocked off Arkansas yesterday to earn their second consecutive appearance in the championship game. Their opponent, either Alabama or Mississippi State. And it will begin with an hour of coverage next Saturday. We'll welcome our studio guys down to the Georgia Dome, 3 o'clock Eastern. And to win the West, Mississippi State has to defeat Ole Miss today and have Auburn defeat Alabama tonight. First down, 10. Prescott comes near side. Cut down. So Darius Bryant, number 14, who sat out the first half under suspension in Senquez Goldston. Number 21 was also there, second and five. But you know, his replacement, Keith Lewis, had a pretty good first half. He had eight tackles subbing for Bryant. 3.05 to go third quarter. Robert Johnson up in the air. Incomplete. Johnson just turned around and the ball was high and you got to catch it. You got to yep. catch that one. You're trying to get in the playoffs. Wasn't a perfect pass, but you didn't get recruited to the SEC receiver not to make that one. Third down five. Blitz. No, they say are. <laughs> <laughs> and here they come. Prescott incomplete. Fred Ross, the intended receiver. And I tell you, the message has been sent by the officials in this football game. They're going to allow these defensive backs to play physical. Golson does a good job to the outside in the game. Burn only four penalties, two on each side. The officials are letting them play football. Devin Bell on the punt for the sixth time. You can see he's got 45 yard average. He move laterally to the right. Markel Pack is Good back. One. Another, Another one. one. That's tough. Oh. Thursday night football returns on Thursday. That's what it says. Tony Romo and the Cowboys take on the Bears as two of the NFL's greatest franchises meet in prime time. Thursday night football returns Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern, live on NFL Network. And of course, they took the week off. For Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yep. yep. Well, you know, as uh, again, Dan Mullen, as he said to Allen, we had poor field position. Now, twice he's had <laughs> Ole Miss backed up. <laughs> hasn't worked too good, but he has at least accomplished the field position part of the goal in the second half. First down, 10. Cross. 
Very good pressure defensively. This is Walton. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, my goodness. It's a foot race. And Walton is going to go all the way. There is a player down for Mississippi State all the way back at the line of scrimmage. Remember coming into this game, a tailback has not gone out for 100 yards all year in this conference. Watch Walton reverse his field and then cut and break a tackle. Will Redmond missed the tackle and he was gone. Vernon Ole Miss wins his football game. This will be a historic run for Ole Miss. 91 yards. 91 yards. And she is saying, oh, my goodness. There's the injured player. It looks like it's Chris Jones. Walton. The play was defended initially. Walton bounces back, cuts up field, and then breaks one tackle, and it's over. Jones to the sideline. When we were last here, it was Jalen Walton from Bo Wallace. A touchdown catch that proved the difference in Ole Miss defeating Alabama. This one a run of 91 yards. Will Rudman had a shot at him, but his cut upfield. Watch, he goes back. Okay, we're under control. Now one big cut. Bam. One missed tackle. Will Rudman did not wrap up, and it was gone. Long yard. 24-10. Back live in Oxford, a 91-yard touchdown run from Jalen Walton, his previous long this year was 71 yards. And that has given Ole Miss. How about that? Remember we talked about the absence of a running game, and they've uh, gone beyond that. Now let's go back and revisit the injury to Chris Jones. Hey, Chris Jones is right here, I believe, and he gets hit by his own player, number 11, Coleman, number 11. Watch him miss the tackle and take out his own man and blows out the... Well, at least we don't know what happened to him, but it looked a very dangerous hit as one of the elite defensive tackles in this league go out. Almost everything went wrong for Mississippi State there. The kick and the knee. And now Red Lobster presents today's scholar athletes. First of all, Tavez Calhoun, 3.58 great point average, volunteered of relief of the Mississippi tornado victims last spring. And for Ole Miss, Will Gleason, the putter. GPA of 3.25, Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. Ashton Shumpert dumped. Tony Connor, number 12, led the way then. Six punts, a turnover on down. Two drops. This one complete out of the left side to Fred Ross. Fred Ross. 
Here we go, third down. As we said, the two best teams in the SEC on third down defense. You only make it one out of three times against these defenses. Shumpert, no. Oh, whoa. Yeah, he finished off that run, didn't yes, he? Yes, he did. Now let's see what the spot will be. I think, I think he's got a right foot spot by that lineman up here, and he's going to get the first down. Uh, Shumpert gets a little. See that right foot first spot? Two, two, Ball's on there the we line. Are. First down. Definite second effort by Shumpert on this one. I thought he was stopped as well, but spun through it and got the first down. That time, number 12, Tony Connor didn't wrap up. Just threw his body at the running back. 1.15 to go in the third. First down and 10. Prescott. Got it. And that could be enough to run you Wilson with the catch. Let's see where they spot this one. You know, Vern, I think Dak Prescott's going, just relax. I wasn't even in the game last year until the fourth quarter. I'm okay. Just relax. Second and one. Prescott, designed run, and he's got a first down. Vertarian Shackelford, number 38, made the tackle. First and 10, Mississippi State. Oh, as Josh Robinson limps off, or looks to limp off. Remember, in this spread offense for Mississippi State, it's been Dak Prescott that has been the beginning lead back, basically. If he has a good game, they win against these top teams. If not, they don't get enough yards. And you saw the bottom of the graphic limited to 50 yards today. Prescott, safety valve. That's Shumpert again. He's got a lot of action today. Yes, he has. I tell you, Dak Prescott's a cool customer, though. And it's a fourth quarter game. And he just says, guys, a year ago, I hadn't even taken off the headset yet. We'll be fine. But it's going to take 14 points at least to get it to overtime. Sure will. As he ended in the fourth quarter play, with a score of the Olmos Rebels 24, this will be set for the Olmos 10. And that is the official end of the third quarter. 24-10 will return to Oxford right after this word from your local station. Stadium Oxford on the campus of Ole Miss. We begin the fourth with Gary Danielson, Allie LaForce, I'm Vern Lundquist, and Ole Miss leads by 14. The Bulldogs have a second down and one at the 45 yard line. Here is Dak Prescott at quarterback. Flags down. Yes. Tom Ritter. Offense, five-yard penalty, remains second down. Relatively penalty-free, as you pointed out. Yeah. And that's going to cost him five. Second and seven. Well, it has been, especially in the second half, a game of enormously big plays. Really, uh, the two great field positions were followed by an 83-yard pass and a 91-yard run. Bo Wallace has only completed 11 out of 27 passes, but for over 290 yards. Now, Mississippi State's defense, pass defense is bad, 
but it's been awful tonight. Big plays have killed them. Third down, eight. Prescott back, across the middle, deep, caught. Deronya Wilson, first down. Deronya Wilson coming across on what they call a square in, goes about 15 yards down the field and tries to square it off. 90 degree cut, and the ball is placed perfectly. Anytime Dak completes a pass, credit that offensive line because the pressure continues to come from Old Miss's defense. They have not let up. Prescott throws it deep left side into the end zone. Did he hang on? Yes, he wow. did. Derunya Wilson. He's matched up against Kendarius Webster, the true freshman number 15 against the six foot five former Mr. Basketball player from Alabama. And the big guy goes up and gets the rebound, and that's a caught pass. No matter what happens after that, he's got it. He came down with it. Simultaneous catch, touchdown. As I said before, Dak's going, I wasn't even in the game yet, guys. Just relax. <laughs> touchdown, Mississippi State. Deronya Wilson. Ruling on the field was a touchdown. That plays in a further review. I don't think there's much doubt about this. And uh, TV does not do justice to how big a man the Runya Wilson is. When you're at the practice field, you go, yeah, I get why he was a power forward. He's got it right there. One, two steps down. Simultaneous. He has it. And then I believe it gets wrestled. Pretty good coverage by the true freshman on that play. He's got it. And then, he, hmm, I think he had it though with two steps. Then completing the catch when they get down, that's when I think it switched hands. And another look. When Vern goes, hmm, that means it's a little closer than you yeah, thought, right? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. A lot said in that. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Oh, there's the catch. Possession clearly established. One foot, two feet. Kind of reminds me of that Eric Reed interception LSU against Alabama in the 9 6 game when they fought for it at the end. Interesting. I, I Interesting. remember that. That was that, that year's uh, game of the century. Right. Under review, 24-16. The ruling again was touchdown. And he goes down to the ground. I think he has it, and then it switches hands after that. That's that's the way I'd call it. Chuck Ross is the man, uh, the official who made the call. I thought the only difference in the Eric Reed was Eric Reed pulled it away before he hit the ground, and then they fought for it. Prescott, who's he chatting with? Well, because he's holding on the play. I think that's C.J. Johnson, isn't it, number 10? Yes, it is. <laughs> he's, he's ready to hold. What? He's working on his laces right now. Are you guys going back to Starkville tonight? <laughs> exactly. Are you staying over? It's a lot of fun in the Grove. Well, this is taking much longer than well, I thought it was. very confident. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. This official review was presented by Richard Schwartz and Associates. Can you hear that uh, over TV? I, Can they hear that? I just, I just heard that. That review was brought to you by Richard Schwartz and Associates. He deserves the time. <laughs> If you're buying an official review, now that's funny. Give the, you. give the guy a little pump on the air. <laughs> <laughs> that came out of nowhere. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Never heard that. No. Nine plays, 75 yards, touchdown pass. Prescott, Mr. Basketball, a couple of years ago from the state of Alabama, Derunya Wilson, Jack Prescott. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs>
And now it's time for our GEICO Game Recap. Well, we expected a close one, a good one, and we've had it. Bo Wallace, both good and bad. Not so lonely, though. 11 of 27, but a couple of huge pass plays. And here's a touchdown from the injured senior quarterback. Mississippi State offense per game, 511.7. Today, they're up to 352. Dak Prescott, a one-yard rushing touchdown. That put uh, Mississippi State on top. And then Liggins, the tight end, dives over the top. 14-10. Ole Miss reclaimed the lead. And here's Jalen Walton bouncing off the tackle. And then Redmond missing a tackle. And the race was on. Walton going 91 yards. That's the third longest run in Ole Miss history. Third longest, 24-10. But just a moment ago, Deronia Wilson from Dak Prescott. And so early in the fourth quarter, 24-17. Nobody's gone. A little more offense here in the second half. Slightly. Has, yes. Just think about, again, what Mississippi State is attempting to do. Ole Miss's defense has only given up 20 or more points twice all year in a win against AM and a loss against Auburn. They're 14 down in the second half. The best defense in the SEC, and they've got a score against them. They're only giving up 13 a game. Mark Dodson, number seven, gets outside, cuts back toward the middle of the field, and a fine return out near the 30-yard line. 13.49 to go. Ole Miss, 8-3 for the year. They lost three in a row after getting into a tie for third following their win here against Alabama. Mississippi State and Dak Prescott, the lone loss at Alabama a couple of weeks ago. He does have a calm demeanor, even on the sideline. He sure does. First down, 10. Seven-point game. Wallace, uh, this is not anything he's going to be able to do well today. And uh, an update on Chris Jones. Let's go down to Allen. Thanks, Vern. It was some sort of left knee irritation, but when they pressed around in there, he wasn't in excruciating pain, so they allowed him to get up and get on the bike. They did put a brace on his left knee, and they gave him the go-ahead to get back in the game. All right, Allie, thank you. Second down and 10. I see him on the sideline right there, standing ready to go. Wallace, no game. Corner blitz coming. Wallace comes left. Got it. Was that one-handed? Yes, it was. Thank you. This Ingram is having a football game, I'll tell you that. Ball goes out to the outside, and the guy who has 171 yards reaches out and beckons it. Third down, five. Wallace out of the backfield. Jalen Walton. Let's see where this ball is marked. That was defended very well by Mississippi State. I think it's short. Fourth and one. Four two players one. help and cannot get Walton to the first down marker. And so Gleason is on, and Fred Ross is back to return it. On fourth down one, a seven-point lead. And Mississippi State keeps their defense out there. They're looking for the fake. Gleason. Or at least they're letting Hugh Freeze know that they're ready for the fake. 12.05 to go in the ball game. 38-yard punt. Fred Ross with a fair catch. Vaughn Hemingway Stadium. The Egg Bowl. Seven-point difference. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Hyundai. Coca-Cola. 
Aflac. And by Chick-fil-A. Good looking dog, 24-17 in this one. And tomorrow, an NFL doubleheader on CBS league game in the one o'clock slot, San Diego at Baltimore. And then the second game of the doubleheader, yep. New England at Green Bay with a couple of fairly decent quarterbacks. Might be a few people watching that game. I'll be ready to watch it, I'll tell you that. Brady 9-2 with the Patriots, Aaron Rodgers. Look at the passing totals, almost even. That's tomorrow, second game of the doubleheader. Josh Robinson has, for the most part, been held in check today. Ten carries, 36 yards. Gets the handoff on first down. Cuts it up. And on cue, he gets a first down. And that was a good point, uh, Vern, because coming into this game, Josh Robinson had 49 plays of 10 yards or more. That's second in the SEC to Amari Cooper's 50. So this is a good job by the Ole Miss defense to slow down one of the weapons for Mississippi State, who has produced a number of big plays in the past. First down 10 on that run by Robinson. You'd guess Cooper. You'd never guess Robinson. Would right. You? Well, I'm not sure what happened then. I do know that Zach Prescott was tackled by C.J. Johnson. Yeah, this didn't look like the whole way, did it? C.J. Johnson, number 10, is at the top of your screen. But Dak Prescott was ready to fake to somebody, and there was nobody to fake to. So either Dak went the wrong direction or miscalled the play or something because that was beyond recognition. Loss of 10, second down and 20. Now they'll put it back on the ground, and Robinson hit as he turns his back upfield. Third and long, and this Ole Miss defense now has to get this stop. As hot as Dak Prescott has been, if they give up a third and long now, that Mississippi State offense will get juiced. Third down, 13. Three-man rush. Prescott settles for the safety valve out on the left. Yeah, great defense. Yes, it was. Led by Mike Hilton, number 28. Three-man rush. I know the audience does not like that, especially when it doesn't work. But in this case, Ole Miss played good zone defense and then forced the ball and just to a two or three yard throw. And then all lanes were covered. There was no way to do it. And you say the convergence of the defenders. It'll be fourth down eight. Devin Bell is on the punt. Oh. Close. And that'll go back upfield where Mississippi State originally touched that ball. A 40-yard punt. And they're going to take it back up another six yards, I think. It appears that way. The ball will be, yep, spotted at the 28. 24-17. He was once a tight end at Ursinus College. Played tight end for the Bears. Now he's a big-time head coach, Dan Mullen. Women of, we want to talk, we need to talk, I'm sorry. Allie, forgive me. <laughs> it's a sports conversation unlike any other as elite women in sports provide another voice for all trending topics. Don't miss We Need to Talk, Tuesday at 8, only on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. And Allie LaForce will be back in New York City helping to host that show. Here's the handoff. Left side. Jordan Wilkins bumped out of bounds. That was out of the Wildcat. Well, you wondered. I, I just keep going back to our conversation with Hugh Freeze on Friday. And I kept going to him, Coach, how can you win without anybody helping your quarterback? 
do you not have to find some running game? And he said to us, we're going to find different ways to run the ball. And he sure has now, hasn't he? Well, that was, it 177 yep. so far. Here's Wilkins again. He fat back pass. to Cody Core. What were you saying about we'll find a way? He find a way. He's found some offense, hasn't he? Freshman, Jordan Wilkins. We started out the game seeing Cody Core injured on the sideline. And in the fourth quarter, he catches a huge pass on a welcome. How about those two play drives? Holy cow. The big plays this Mississippi State defense has given up in this game. Wonderlick, it was a bad hold. But then Ryan Buchanan, who is a quarterback, I don't know if it was a low snap. Let's take a look first of all at the touchdown. Love how he came up into the pocket to throw the football, and Will Redman. Never had a chance on a perfect throw. Sonic Wilkins and Wallace. Will Redmond. And Hugh Freeze. He's played, he's had a dream of a play calling night as Hugh Freeze. Thirty-one seventeen, nine fourteen to go in this bitter rivalry. And if you talk to anybody from Mississippi State or Ole Miss, they will tell you in their minds this is the nastiest, meanest rivalry in football. The guys a state over in Alabama would probably disagree. Well, this game didn't used to have other consequences. Yes, it was just state champs basically. This year, there's national implication, and it's going to hurt a lot more for Mississippi State unless they make a huge comeback. Oh, I'm surprised. Me too. And we invite you to stay tuned for the Dodge postgame show that'll follow our game on CBS. 9.14 remaining. First down, 10. Fake and a flip out to the left side. Jamion Lewis out near the 40. That's a gain of 14. Two players for Mississippi State that have been quiet in this football game. Jamion Lewis and Matt Wells on defense. Two of their playmakers we haven't heard much from all game. That one's incomplete. Yes, it is. Fred Ross it was down around the knees, and he couldn't hang on. Dak Prescott kind of pulled the string on this one. He locked out his left knee, and the ball just kind of went into the ground. And you saw Dan Mullen in the background indicating exactly that. Second down and 10. Play action, Prescott. Incomplete. Intended for Robinson. Defended by Tony Connor, number 12. Tony Connor, again, another member of that prize recruiting class from a year ago. Played as a true freshman. One of the leading tacklers, in fact, the tie for the leading tackler for the Ole Miss defense. Third down, 10, under nine to go. Prescott, one hop. To... Yeah, but no. the receiver fell down on the play, and it's going to force a punt. I think if they'd have just completed a short pass, Dan Mullen might have thought of going for it on fourth down. Lewis is going to fall down on the play. Gets in there to watch him slip. Well, he kind of got jammed. Nice play 
that time inside by Keith Lewis. Had a very productive day. Absolutely. Night. Yep. And Devin Bell is on to punt on fourth down and ten. And it takes kind of a neutral bounce down at the 18-yard line. 8.33 to go. Remember early in the broadcast, we talked about the problems this Ole Miss team had in yes. rushing. The they could ball. not find a tailback that could give them yards, okay? Look at all those big games in the SEC. Well, tonight they found one, and we said, remember, it's lonely, Bo. Well, tonight, Bo's got some guys around him. The defense is playing well. He's found enough of the running game, and Bo's produced. Not a lot of accurate throws. He's 13 for 29. Right. But big ones. And they give it off left side. That's Jalen Walton, who had the biggest run of the night. 91 yards for a touchdown. I mentioned that uh, that was the third longest run. Earlier, John Avery. Remember him? Sure. A small running back. He had a run of 97 yards for this Ole Miss team. There's Hugh Freeze. Was he drafted by the Dolphins, wasn't he? I think you're right. Second down, eight. Uh, listen to this. Ole Miss, 504 yards before this uh, drive began. Scoring drives of four plays, two plays, two plays, and uno. One. Wow. Well, Mississippi State's pass defense came in ranked 117th in the country. They could go down. Second down, eight. Still time for Mississippi State to get the ball back twice. You just can't sit on it if you're Ole Miss. And they're not sitting on it. How about this reverse? Cody Core. Out to the 41. Hugh Freeze is going foot to the gas pedal the whole game. Bo Wallace got in the way on a block. It's a reverse. He gets just enough to slow the defensive end down on the play, and he's around the corner. Well, Hugh Freeze, we mentioned, grew up in Senatobia, Mississippi. He graduated from Southern Miss. His brother, Kerry, graduated from Mississippi State, and he's somewhere on the sideline trying to go incognito as a bulldog grab. First down, 10. Wildcat again. This is Walton. And let's go back to New York once again. Here's Adam Zucker with an update. Hey, Vern, moments ago in Tallahassee with under two minutes left. Fourth down for the Gators. Treon Harris missing his man. And the number three Knowles are now getting the ball back and trying to run out the clock. Could win despite four interceptions by Jameis Winston. Also a final in Madison, Wisconsin. On to the Big Ten Championship game against Ohio State. Back to you. Well, they're still undefeated, aren't they? <laughs> I'm Amazing. Just, oh, I'm just never setting seen anything like it. I really haven't. I, I mean, it's <laughs> no. It, it is an extraordinary season for the Seminoles. Second down eight here. Wallace. Don't do anything. Nothing crazy. If it's not there, yeah. just get get down on the play. But it's been an extraordinarily bad day for the SEC too. I mean, you look. They had four key games as you watch this replay to help out Mississippi State should they win. But of course, their second team is losing and all four of their teams, Florida, South Carolina, Georgia, and Kentucky, all lost to their ACC foe today. That's gonna be tough. I don't think there's any way the SEC can get two teams in the final four, even if old Mississippi State comes back. Yeah, they've got to pull this out to have a shot. And that one's incomplete, left side. Atavius Mathers, it'll be fourth down and 13. So 5.43 to go, down by 14. And if Mississippi State loses this one, you see Wallace limping as he goes off. Alabama's in. They're in. Yep. Well, this ain't over. I mean, there's this. Uh, uh, I, I, yeah, of course, you weren't, I, you're right. You weren't saying that, but I mean, this is a, just not a good enough, you know, I mean, everybody's looking. Even if they win, the committee's going to say, eh. Mm -hmm. Boy, Mississippi just shanks a punt to give Mississippi State good field position, too. 5.36 to go. Ball will be 
Marked out at the 35. That's a 28 yard shank. Alabama faces Auburn tonight in Tuscaloosa. Oregon is at Oregon State tonight. Florida State wins by five. Mississippi State 10 and one for the year. How about that big win for TCU? Ohio State holds on. Baylor leading Tech. UCLA lost, Georgia lost. So you're talking about the seven top ranked teams and four of them seemingly are battling for that four spot. Prescott. You know, the interesting thing about Ole Miss's defense is they're an attacking defense. Now, how good will they be playing a little bit safe? It's not what they do very well. Might they give up a little bit too much yardage and allow Mississippi State to put a touchdown on the board and then go for an onside kick? Second down four. Good blocking up front. See it? Very yeah. soft. Yes. Very soft. Catch is made by Deronio Wilson, and that's a first down. Mississippi State wants to obviously march down the field. Well, they'd like to score on one play. But yeah. the way Ole Miss is playing, they're going to have to be patient and march down the field and then keep their timeouts. Yep. Yeah. Both teams have all three. Prescott keeps it. And uh, gets a good gain out of that one. Marquise Haynes, number 27 with the tackle. Second down and four. 450 to go. On second and five, Shumpert. Oh my, Shumpert! I thought uh. he was going to lose yards on that play. When I saw it with my eyes from up here, the way Ole Miss runs and pursues a play, how he could get inside two Mississippi State players. They both overran it. Now they hurry up. Oh, two Ole Miss players overrun the same play. First down from the 20. Quick flip. That's Fred Ross. Boy, they're going so fast here, they don't even need to go for a, a, an onside kick. C.J. Johnson limping as he heads back to the line of scrimmage. At a gain of eight, second down and two. Just doesn't fit their M.O. to play soft on defense. They come right side, Jamie on Lewis. And he's denied the first down and brought down inside the uh, sideline, so the clock keeps running. Yeah, a couple mistakes by Jamie Allen Lewis. He could have got outside, and if he didn't make it, he'd at least been out of bounds. He stays in the field and takes off more precious time. Third down one, Prescott. To the five, whoa! Boy! Wow. Oh, my! Holy cow. The five-yard penalty, third down. He was, he was almost slowing down. Well, it was a no play. The whistle had blown. Uh, it was a dead play. He lets up on the play, and he gets hit just as he lets up. The whistle's blowing, see? Oh, oh dear. Trey Elston is the guy who made the tackle. Yes. I didn't notice that, I must admit. Third down six. Interesting timeout for Ole Miss because Dak Prescott still does not have his wits about him. I think that helps Mississippi State. Mm -hmm. Boy, that was frightening. Third down six after the penalty. It was Ole Miss who called the timeout. Yeah. Prescott, as you noted, Gary, still dazed. He was. Remember, the play should not have been at a play at all. Dak Prescott hears the whistle, and the Ole Miss player does not. Now, you know, when you make a tackle like that, when some players do and you don't, you could get called on that play. Now third down six. Prescott. How about this? They come back to a running play? 
extraordinary. I don't get that one at all. Nope. Fourth down. I, I, well, I don't get it. Marquise Haynes made the tackle. It's fourth down with 3.05 to go, nearing the three-minute mark. See the season record, 7 of 15. Fourth and five. They're stacked wide to the left. Play action. Prescott. He's got a man open. It's going to be first and goal. That was Malcolm Johnson. That would have been a nice call on third down, if you ask me. Quarterback's dinged as bad as he is. Did he come with a running play? Still alive. Still a football game. 2.35 to go. It'll be second and goal as Robinson gets inside the five. These but that dangerous calls to be running the ball at this time of the game right now. You throw the ball if it's incomplete. You don't have to use timeout, and you don't have to take 25 seconds off the clock. Clock is still running at 2.15. A lot of time wasted then. 2.08 at the snap. Prescott, sure. Intended for Jamion Lewis. Tony Connor again. Connor with the pressure was enough to force the wide throw. The only good thing, obviously, two good things for Mississippi State. They're in scoring position, and they still have all three timeouts. But remember how deliberate they were yes. in the Alabama game? Deliberate again here. But this time they have three timeouts, right. so it's a little bit different. Third down goal. Prescott lobs it high. Great defense. Yes. Said Golson Quiz, is there. Yes. Yep. Said Quiz Golson just fade. He just fade and he jumped to the outside. Right here. Watch him jump to the outside. He guesses and guesses right. Gets to the outside technique. Actually, the double coverage on the play. Give that one to defensive coordinator Dave Womack because Cody Pruitt had the inside route. Fourth down goal, under two to go. It's the ball game right here. They gotta make the touchdown. Prescott. Incomplete, ball goes over on downs. Coaching moment for Mullen and Prescott. First down, 10, 152 to go. Well, it was an obvious passing situation, and Dan Mullen went with the play action pass to the quarterback. I don't think anybody on Ole Miss thought it was going to be a run. They did not go for the fake, and nothing was there. Dan Mullen, who a couple of years ago did Mullen say, we will never lose to this team again. Here's the run from Jalen Watkins. Every time you're in the huddle now, you have to, as quarterback Bo Wallace has to tell everybody, ball security, no penalties. Mississippi State uses a timeout. They've got two left. Long look to, to run you, Wilson. So many dreams. They were top ranked for a period of time before the Alabama loss. And uh, this will be destructive to the psyches of this Mississippi State Bulldog team. And this is what they're battling for used to be called the Battle for the Golden Egg. Now it's simply known as the Egg Bowl. Jalen Walter. And it's senior day here. This day began quite some time ago. Hugh Freeze. Cody Pruitt, the leader, Hugh Freeze says. Detarius Shackelford, sixth year, has his masters already. 
working on a doctorate. And Bo Wallace. And he limped out. He limped all game. But that right arm, there was no limp in that one. It might not be the most accurate game I've seen, but 13 for 30, 296. And Vern, Q Freeze at Ole Miss is 14 and 0. When they run for 200 yards, they've run for 204. He'll now be 15 and 0. Third down two here. I so remember, Gary, when we were in Atlanta for the SEC championship game four years ago, we have a dinner in conjunction with the SEC every Thursday night. We'll do so again this week. And uh, here is the running play to the outside. Jalen Walton. Wow, he made a first down. How about that? How about that run? And Ole Miss will be able to win this game by going into their victory formation and taking a knee. And everyone loves to do that. How about three running plays to finish off the game? 90 seconds to go. You know, Vern, I just got to say this. All year, the SEC has been talking about getting two teams in. What happens if Alabama loses now? If they lose in the SEC championship, who goes? It's got to be Missouri if anyone goes, doesn't it? Yes. I mean, the team that wins has got to go if Missouri wins. Yes. Or not take any. First and ten. Clock down to the play clock is at ten. And there's a knee. Hugh Freeze, I, I was mentioning that I was on a bus going back to the hotel with Archie Manning, who was really part of the... Uh, here's a little fracas breaking out. And we were on the van going back after our dinner, and Archie was in charge of selecting the new coach. And he said, we've got our man. And I said, and whom might it be? He said, I ain't going to tell you. That's right. Well, Archie <laughs> spoke with Archie today. He's still recuperating from his surgery on his knee, and he's watching the game right now. So he's got to be having a joyous day, <laughs> along with his alma mater. The high hopes with which they entered the game have disappeared. Mississippi State lost any chance. Oh dear. They got his wife too. <laughs> oh well. I think he should go kiss both. Dak Prescott. The trophy for the golden egg. Listen, it was a total team win, Burn, but the warrior Bull Wallace is going to graduate from Ole Miss, almost a folk hero. Jill Freeze almost froze. <laughs> Ouch! <Woo! laughs> Allie LaForce is with Hugh Freeze. Coach, did that Gatorade ice bath look, at, look as good as it feels? Well, it felt so good, Allie. It felt so good, you know. Winning this game here uh, means so much to the people of this state, to our kids. We've had some uh, tough breaks this year in some games, and uh, our kids just fought all year, man. Uh, you know, we're we're getting closer. We're uh, That's a good team we beat there, and just so proud of our guys and our university, our administration, our fans. Awesome. The Egg Bowl trophy's all yours, and you did it with a banged-up football team, Bo Wallace, who was injured. Your top yeah. two wide receivers out. What does that tell you about this team? Well, our, our word for the week was resolve. You will have to have great resolve to get through the adversities of life, and this is no different here tonight. And uh, they played 60 minutes, a great, uh, had great resolve, played together, stuck together, and our coaches did a great job. Where will the Egg Bowl trophy end up tonight? It'll end up in my office tonight. And lastly, your brother went to Mississippi State. You said you have cousins who went to Mississippi yeah. State. Who are you going to rub it into first? Nah, man, I'm just, I'm not going to rub it in. I'm going to celebrate with these kids and these fans. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations, Coach. Thank Bo, you. step on over here. Not only did you win the big battle in the state of Mississippi, but you did it on senior night. You came and you fought even though you had a serious injury last week. What does it mean to win it on senior night? 
huge. Um, you know, I, I can't thank the doctors enough for getting me ready to play. Uh, the old line, man, I, I couldn't move much, but they kept guys off of me. Guys really came out and played their hearts out, and uh, you know, this celebration, you can kind of, you can, you can tell. How will you celebrate tonight? Uh, I just want to be around my fans, our, our friends, family, and teammates. Um, uh, it's going to be a great celebration, though. Congratulations, Bo. Very much. Well, yeah. you know, I got to first think about the disappointment for Mississippi State. You know, travel so long, still in the hunt, uh, salute their season. But, you know, we saw a team, Ole Miss, that was out of gas emotionally and physically after that injury and lost to Auburn. They did not play well against Arkansas, but, boy, they got new life to play against their rival. Dak Prescott will get another chance, but these Ole Miss guys earned this trophy tonight. And it's time now for the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. 91-yard run, third longest in Ole Miss history. Jalen Walton bounces back to the left, breaks a tackle of Redmond, and then gets an escort from Cody Core downfield, careful not to block from behind. 91 yards. And a second look with Ole Miss radio announcer David Kellum. Quick pitch by Wallace to Walton. He starts right, nothing there. Now tries to go back left and then angles up the middle of the field. Oh, he's broken clear. He's to the 20. He's to the 30. He's to the 40. Can he get there? He's got a blocker. He's to the 40. He's to the 30. He's to the 20. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. Oh, man. Wow. All I can say is wow. I've said that before. A yes, you have. Well, Hugh Freeze told us earlier this year we're actually ahead of where I thought we would be. Well, now he can really claim that. Well, he, he almost called a perfect game. He kept it balanced just enough to take the pressure. He did not have a running quarterback tonight, so he relied on his tailbacks more, and I think that's the offense he's going to have to bring in the future. He just can't have a running quarterback. You need those tailbacks. Well, there will be joy in the Grove tonight and a long hour and a half drive back to Starkville for the Bulldogs. Next Saturday, 4 o'clock Eastern, we'll all be in Atlanta, Alabama against Missouri. Alabama gets in without having to defeat Auburn in the game played in Tuscaloosa tonight. Our entire crew, David Moulton, Butch Baird, Chuck Gardner here. Down in the truck. Craig Silver, Steve Milton, and the 70 men and women of our SEC on CBS technical and production crew. The Dodge Post Game Show is up next after these messages and a word from your local station. At 10. Right now at 10, Egg Bowl Mania has taken over Oxford tonight as the showdown ends with the Rebels victorious. And move over Black Friday. Shoppers spend the day supporting small business. I'm Elizabeth Gooch. New at 10 tonight, the battle for the Golden Egg has ended with Ole Miss taking a 31-17 victory over Mississippi State. As you can imagine, Rebel fans are thrilled. Bulldog fans are disappointed. But prior to kickoff, they all seem to be having a good time. WTVA's Craig Ford caught up with some of the fans in the Grove. It wasn't easy to see them at first, but they were there. Mississippi State fans working their way through the Ole Miss faithful in the Grove. It's fun. I like it. It's a fun place to be. A lot of people, kind of overwhelming. There's a lot of red and blue and uh, people yelling. <laughs> we all know the rivalry between State and Ole Miss can be intense, but instead of intensity, there was primarily hospitality among fans. Most of the overwhelming people have been nice. Some of them, not so much, but overwhelmingly nice. It's a great place for all the Mississippi, Mississippi residents to unify and come together and, and just have a good time. Then again, what else would you expect in one of the premier tailgating spots in America? Now, there was some kidding among fans. You can get away with that sort of thing between sisters. You don't hold it against your sister that she's uh, stayed, do you? 
Mm, a little bit. <laughs> as long as she understands As it. long as my team wins, we're all good. It's probably safe to say all can be forgiven prior to kickoff. After that, all bets are off. In Oxford, Craig Ford, WTVA News. On a more serious note, MSU says there was an accident tonight with one of its buses on the highway, but thankfully no one was hurt. Later in sports, WTA's Andy Lee will have highlights and reaction from the 111th meeting on the gridiron between Mississippi State and Ole Miss. It's that time of year. Mississippi State and Ole Miss met for the 111th time today. Enough talk. Let's get to the highlights. The 87th battle for the Golden Egg, or as one Clarion Ledger sports editor coined it in 1978, the Egg Bowl. Scoreless in the first, Ole Miss driving when Bo Wallace is intercepted by Tavise Calhoun, Wallace's 11th pick of the season. Bad Bo, but he'd make up for it. Boy, did the Land Sharks come to play today. Dak Prescott drops back and is sacked for a big loss. The Rebels finally get something going on offense. Good Bo. Wallace down the seam to Evan Ingram. Ingram tripped up inside the five then Wallace bum ankle and all it's gonna take some contact from a defender and score from one yard out Ole Miss draws first blood in the Egg Bowl Bulldogs would answer on their next drive late in the first quarter Prescott to Jamie on Lewis it'll pass over the middle that's good for 15 yards and a first down but the drive would stall Evan Sobieski he's been shaky all year Nails this one from 45 yards out. Rebels would take a 7-3 lead to the locker room. Now to the second half, the offenses explode. Dak Prescott from one yard out to put the Bulldogs back up 10-7. Next Rebels drive, Bo Wallace to Evan Ingram. Over the middle again, Ingram would finish with 176 yards receiving but was left out of the end zone. Oh, the irony brought down shy of the goal line again. After a field goal makes it 17-10, Ole Miss check out Jalen Walton, the Memphis native, squirting through this, that big front seven of MSU. Who says Ole Miss can't run the ball? They could today. 91 yards to the house for Walton, 24-10, Ole Miss late in the third. The Bulldogs would have an answer early in the fourth. Dak Prescott, fake handoff. Deronia Wilson makes the catch after a lengthy review. It's ruled a touchdown, but Ole Miss comes back with a little trickery. It's a rivalry game. you got to try everything, including the halfback pass. Are you kidding me? Jordan Wilkins to Cody Kaur. That seals the deal. Ole Miss wins the Egg Bowl 31-17. Jim Holder with a recap from Oxford. Andy, what a difference a year and a week makes. Last week, Ole Miss being beaten by Arkansas 30 to nothing. Mississippi State a 51 nothing win over Vanderbilt. But for the 10th time in 11 years, the home team wins the Egg Bowl. And our word for the week was resolve and play with great resolve for uh, 60 minutes and see where that put us. And, uh, and tonight we were the better football team. You know, I've been thinking about this game since last year. I mean, every single day I've, I've thought about this game. This game pushed me this offseason to, to work harder than I ever had. Yeah, it sucks. I'm not going to enjoy it. I won't be able to freaking sleep for about 365 days till they show up at our place next year. I mean, we just got to fight adversity again. I mean, second loss, just uh, respond from it. Uh, we've had success, but... Uh, we gotta, we got to show we can continue uh, continue to grow and get better even uh, after a loss. So now the Bulldogs and the Rebels will wait to see which Bulls they'll head to. They'll find that out on December 7th. Reporting in Oxford, Jim Holder, WTVA Sports. Thank you, Jim. Nice work. One state to our east, Alabama. Most important. Weather is brought to you. Busy day in college football. It is rivalry weekend and Mississippi State Ole Miss playing as they always do. Ole Miss gets the win, winning the Egg Bowl, celebrating tonight with the trophy, the second win in the series in three years for the Rebels. Much more on this matchup. We'll hear what both sides are saying coming up next in sports. Yeah. Gotta continually win to have a chance at that special year. Not hatred for somebody else. You're gonna play out of love for one another. Mississippi State and Ole Miss have been playing on the football field for more than a century. Every season is a year's worth of bragging rights. That is up for grabs. But today, 
There is as much as ever on the line. It is a historic day, and Ole Miss comes out on top. Mississippi State comes in, still in the national title hunt. Still a chance at the SEC West. Bo Wallace, Ole Miss, and company trying to crush those dreams and playing the role of spoiler. Remember, the Bulldogs winning four of the last five in this series. First quarter, Ole Miss offensively, it doesn't start well. Bo Wallace throwing end zone to Bez Calhoun for the Bulldogs. Picks it off. Bo Wallace will redeem himself shortly. And the defense for Ole Miss, fantastic the whole game. Marcus Haynes gets the sack on Dak Prescott. And the Rebels go back on offense in the first quarter. Bo Wallace looking over the middle. Evan Engram, the sophomore tight end, has a monster day. Down at the one. Wallace takes it himself from there around the right side. This one is reviewed, but he is in. Seven zip Rebels first quarter. Seven to three at the half. MSU just 128 total yards. Third quarter, the Bulldogs coming back. Dak Prescott, he's in. That's a methodical drive to give MSU the 10 to seven lead. Ole Miss back with it. Wallace to Engram again. This time the tight end slips a tackle. This is an even bigger play. 83 yards inside the 10, down inside the five. That leaves some room for Jeremy Liggins, the Lafayette Northeast grad. 14 to 10, Ole Miss after that score. The Rebels grab the lead right back, but MSU looking to answer. Prescott, he's gonna go up top. It's complete. Fred Ross, gain of 55, but MSU misses the field goal. Ole Miss kicks one of their own, 17 to 10, Rebels. Then, the most ridiculous play of this game, Jalen Walton for Ole Miss, look at that. Almost down in the backfield, but then he uh, escapes somehow and takes off the third longest run in Ole Miss history. Maybe the play of the year for the Rebels, 91 yards, 24 to 10. Ole Miss, the offense is rolling as it goes to the fourth quarter. But MSU not done. Prescott, Deronye Wilson, Bear Force One launches, and in great coverage, the Bulldogs score come within a possession. Nine minutes left. A little trickery. The running back Jordan Wilkins throwing deep. Cody Core the catch. 31-17 Ole Miss. The Rebels hang on. The Golden Egg is back in Oxford. Ole Miss upsetting MSU two years ago. Stomping out the Bulldogs national title dreams today as the Golden Egg is back at home for Ole Miss. Getting the 31-17 win. You see some of the stats. Jalen Walton 148 yards on the ground. Evan Ingram finishes with 176 receiving. Bo Wallace, a complete day for him. Mississippi State held to three and a half rushing yards per carry. Not the game plan for the Bulldogs. Well, still ahead, we have plenty more to get to. We'll hear from both sides after all the drama unfolded at Vaught Hemingway Stadium, what they're saying when we return. Advanced menu. Mississippi State, the hopes of a national championship, and suddenly and in heartbreaking fashion in Oxford. As the Bulldogs see the biggest game of the year, their biggest rival, celebrating with the most coveted trophy in Oxford. Oxford. But for Ole Miss, it's a time to soak it all in. The Rebels tonight can forget about some of the struggles from earlier on in the year. And after the game, quarterback Bo Wallace, head coach Hugh Freeze, talking about what this moment means. We had to have this game. I had to win this game. Um, you know, I didn't practice much this week, but I could just tell that, you know, the way guys were preparing that we were gonna, we were gonna put up a fight, and um, especially to to keep them from going to the playoff, it just makes it even more special. You know, for all the the the, the stuff he gets talked about, uh, I hope now that this would uh, cement his place in in Ole Miss history as a as a quarterback that came and helped us restore pride and uh, return to relevancy, win two Egg Bowls, at least two bowl games, take us to a third. Um, you know, I, I hope that this cements uh, his, uh, his memory here by everybody in a very, very positive light because he, he really deserves that. Um, I kind of look at the big picture and I know that there, there, there are you know, people in, in this program that, that probably disagree and that's okay, they're entitled to that. Um, but. To be sitting here nine and three and beating, uh, let's see, the number one team in the nation, number four team in the nation, and lost some very difficult ones in this conference on the road. Um, you know, I, I think we've come miles and miles in in three short years. And uh, anytime you end the season with nine wins and and the egg bowl in your possession, that's a dang good year. Well, that sucks. I mean, you don't ever want to. I want to. I want to. You know. I mean, we're here to build the team that's going to finish at number one. Uh, not just be at number one at some part. I mean, it, it's been a great season. I'm really proud of our guys, and 
Um, you know, uh, we came here to build a championship program. I don't see y'all laughing about that anymore like you have for the last couple of years. But, um, you know, that was our goal, to build a championship program. Uh, and we're going to continue to fight until we win a championship. Heartbreaking on this island. Uh, had such a great season. And uh, just to lose or give away the uh, egg ball right there, that hurts. We just got to fight adversity again. I mean, second loss, just uh, respond from it. Uh, we've had success, but uh, we got we to gotta show we can continue, uh, continue to grow and get better even uh, after a loss.